An entire season of hard work and dedication has all come down to one game. It's the host St. Mike's Majors taking on potential first overall pick, Jonathan Huberdeau and the St. John Sea Dogs. The MasterCard Memorial Cup Final, tonight. It's the same ritual each fall. Vague familiarity of surroundings that mark a return to a frozen surface waiting to reveal its season. Like a movie building suspense one reel at a time, the Memorial Cup has divided a field. Two sent home, two left standing. The fine line between hope and ruin. MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Playing on the big screen tonight. They stood in the same spot 10 days ago, vocal about their Mississauga majors. A few more Sea Dog supporters here. St. John clinched a spot in the game on Tuesday, so people booked their tickets to the GTA. Having known for five days, St. John will play for the Memorial Cup, which has arrived at the Hershey Center via military escort. Love the trues, guys, but any musical theme should belong to Stomp and Tom tonight. A pair of PI coaches colliding. It's, it's Bud the Spud from the bright red mud going down the highway smiling. Will it be Dave Cameron or Gerard Gallant with the Memorial Cup in that hall of potatoes? Up top in the third level, championship game of the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Hockey Central is on the scene. Darren Millard with Nick Kiprios. 
Damian Cox at the end, and a man stuck in the middle in more ways than one tonight. <laughs> Prince Edward Island's very own Doug McLean. You know Gerard Glant. You know Dave Cameron very well. You know Mike Kelly, who's part of that St. John Sea Dogs. They're watching tonight at Credit Union Place in Summerside. You're giving me bumps, goosebumps. <laughs> You're getting me excited. So where, where do your uh, allegiances lie? Well, uh, look, Dave Cameron's a great friend, a former teammate of mine, a terrific guy. But he's from King Cora. I'm a Summerside guy. <laughs> Gerard Glantz is a Summerside guy. I taught him in high school. I've coached with him in Columbus. I got to say I'm going with e the Maritime flavor. I'm going hey, with St. Either, John. either way, you get to drink out of the cup this summer. Either way, it's going to be at Spinnaker's Landing in Summerside. Mar maritime flavor, but Damien, this has got big league feel, feel, feel in the GTA. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a huge market for the Memorial Cup and for whichever one of these teams can walk away the winner tonight. There's gonna there's a national television audience and a lot of people with a lot of memories of what has been a tremendous tournament in a big city that a lot of people said couldn't pull this off. Mississauga has more big game experience, but they've lost both, including that World Junior Championship game and Game 7 of the OHL Finals. So maybe in experienced youth, Peter Labardia, Sam Cosentino, might be a little bit of an edge for St. John. St. John is a very young team, one of the youngest to ever perform in this particular contest, which to me is unlike any other, even unlike any other that's been played during this particular MasterCard Memorial Cup. I think there's a lot of keys as to what will indeed determine a winner here this evening. Where do you start? Well, I start with uh, Mississauga, and I start with the start of the game for Mississauga. We go back to the semifinal against Kootenai and really established early on that they were going to come out and play physical. They wanted to take advantage of a Kootenai team that had played a night earlier, and so by setting the tone physically, that really helped set the stage to provide some offense early on. And as we see Fleming, Cramarosa, Wise, and the captain Sezikis getting involved very early in the game. Devontae smith pelly their offensive leader in this tournament, gets it started for Mississauga. I think a physical start and a goal are key to Mississauga in the first 10 minutes. But when I look at the St. John Sea Dogs, this is a young hockey club. We're so used to seeing 19 and 20 year old players play in this tournament. But four of the best six players for St. John are all draft eligible guys led by Jonathan Huberto, who has really made a name for himself, who is expected now to go in the top five in the National Hockey League draft when you wouldn't have said that at the start of the year. How are these young guns going to handle this pressure? Yes, they played in under-17s, under-18s, they've been to top prospect games, but they have never seen the kind of pressure that tonight's game will hand them. And it does interesting things to the people that play it. Keys to the game are brought to you by Irwin Tools, makers of Groove Lock Vice Grip pliers. A simple push of a button adjusts jaws two times faster. Visit Irwin.com for more. If you're St. John, you'd love a repeat of opening night when Darren, they found the net 144 in. One of 77 victories on the season for the QMJHL champions. Maybe the rest impacted them the most in the sense of they were tired of celebrating. This team loves to score. Yeah, I think they'll find some strength to lift their arms a couple more times in this championship game. Three guys on St. John instantly make St. John the favorites in this hockey game just based solely on their skill. Start with Jonathan Huberto, who is arguably one of the top players now. Could he slide into a number one pick overall in the NHL drive? quite possibly with the effort that he's had this week. Then you go to Yurko, another talented guy and the best hands in this tournament, as we saw against Kootenai and Galeev, whose rights are already owned by the Washington Capitol. These guys are game breakers based solely on their individual skill. And not to mention a guy like Zach Phillips, who's also a projected first rounder. He came into this tournament uh, hurting a little bit with an arm injury. He's had no goals in this tournament, but with four full days off, Look for this guy to have a big impact in this hockey game. Doug, can Mississauga keep up offensively? Well, look, the uh, smith pelly uh, line with Sezikis and Shug have been terrific throughout this tournament. They're going to have to go through Saman Depre. And is he an imposing defenseman for the Sea Dogs? 6'4", 225 left shot, number one pick of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And is he a warrior? Gerard Glant loves this guy. He's the heart and soul of his hockey team. He will be the guy that will have to shut down the Sezikis line. Is he capable of it? Yeah, he's capable of it. He's that good. He's that mean he's that tough he's that valuable he was hurting coming into this tournament with a, a case of bronchitis he's healthy now heard rumors it is unconfirmed but 
Should St. John win this championship game tonight, there's a push to replace the M in QMJHL, which right now stands for Major to Maritime. It's about time. Yeah, well, as usual with Darren, I'd say double check your sources <laughs> on that one, all right? But let's face it, forever, the Maritimes, when it comes to hockey, has been about exports, whether it was the managerial and coaching brilliance of Doug McLean or Sidney Crosby going to play in Ramuski and I playing like the in way the those two, two names go yeah, together. Playing at the 2005 Memorial Cup. There he is right there. Moncton almost won became the first team from the Maritimes to win the Memorial Cup in 2006, but couldn't quite do it. Now this is St. John's chance. They would be the first team in the history, the 93 year history of the Memorial Cup from the Maritimes to take this championship. Look, I think that makes this a truly national championship. And we know that six teams now from the Maritimes are part of the 18 team uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. That's a league that's changing and it's good for Canadian hockey. I'll keep you guys up to date if it is confirmed before the end of tonight <laughs> after the trophy presentation by David Branch from the Canadian Hockey League. You don't have to be a Maritimer to feel the ocean of pressure. Majors, Casey Sezikis, back with Devontae smith Pally, who's right in the mix for tournament MVP. Sea Dogs captain Mike Thomas plays his last game in junior tonight. Jonathan Huberto may be doing the same if he impresses enough. CHL Championship game is on Rogers Sportsnet tonight. The MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Old Dutch. Look for Old Dutch chips, salsa, pretzels, nuts, and more in your favorite store. Old Dutch, the official chip of the CHL. And by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Canadian Hockey League. 60 teams, three leagues, one goal. To play in May for the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The list of legends that have focused their sights on that one goal is a who's who of hockey's most hallowed icons. Many of the founding pillars of this great game have first honed their skill and sharpened their craft on the ice of the Canadian Hockey League. The lineage of young men that were born in this league and now reside in the Hockey Hall of Fame is truly astounding. Today's game is no different. The list of superstars with CHL pedigree would appear endless. Make no mistake, the roots of hockey are firmly planted in the Canadian Hockey League. So it begins. After eight months of dedication, countless hours of practice, sacrifice upon sacrifice, all for that one chance, that one moment, to be called MasterCard Memorial Cup Champion. And it will end in a full building at the Hershey Center in Mississauga, the MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship game with Hockey Central's Nick Kiprios Doug McLean and Damian Cox. Welcome back, everybody. Darren Millard at the controls. St. Mike's has shrugged off its only slump of the year that cost them the OHL title. They've come back with three straight wins. And while some players come in with reputations, Nick, others create them at this tournament. Yeah, and I think that's what Smith Pelly's doing right now. A uh, second round pick of Anaheim. He signed a three year entry level contract. I think they're hoping that uh, he's the second coming of a Corey Perry type of player. Gritty, a good set of hands. And with a guy like this, he doesn't need all that much room. Case in point, the power play goal the other night against Kootenai. Look, right off the stick and in the net. And then he came back with a nice goal where he actually took his time. You give him the room that he wants, he'll take advantage of it, and then he snapped to a uh, top shelf. So we know that St. Mike's doesn't have the bullets now to match the offense of St. John, but at least they come in with a hot hand in Smith Pelly. If you can keep it close, a good tight defensive game, maybe a game breaker like Smith Pelly can take over. Okay, I, I know that Dave Cameron is the guy from rural PEI, and Gerard Gland is the townie. Uh, from Summerside, but beyond that, what's the difference between the two coaching styles? Well, it's really interesting. It, it is amazing when you look at the d two of them, both coaches, the Western Capitals. Dave Cameron led the Capitals as runner-up to the Royal Bank Cup, and he's a good, sound, solid hockey guy. Played in the NHL, graduate of UPEI, where he played four years, 
and he's become an excellent coach. Eight years, St. Uh, Mississauga coach, St. Mike's Mississauga, and he's done a tremendous job, world junior coach. And then Gerard Gallant, a little more of an offensive flair. I think Gerard, a former NHL All-Star, 30 goal scorer. These two guys grew up 10 miles apart from each other, and it's really something special that they're playing against each other in this tournament. Mike Kelly, you see in the picture, also a native of King Cora PEI. So really is a special thing to see these two guys who I sort of grew up with going head to head and in this your, tournament. Your connection with Gerard Gallant and the Columbus Blue Jackets yeah, should not sure. be overlooked as yeah, well. For sure. Both these clubs uh, have found the winning track. They're riding three straight wins. What's the biggest thing they've learned since they launched this tournament? Well, I don't know what St. John learned other than the fact that uh, they've had a whole bunch of days off. But I can tell you, St. Mike's learned that if they take some penalties, this is going to be an ugly night, just like opening night was. They started that one off with this one, a delay of game penalty. Then they took this one. That led to a power play goal. And then they took this one, Justin Chug, in the neutral zone. And that led to not only a power play goal, but the winning goal of the hockey game by Nathan Burlo. Look, St. Mike's just doesn't have the firepower to go up against St. John if they're going to be killing penalties all night. They also took a bunch late in that game that killed any chance of a comeback. They're going to stay out of the box. I have a pretty good feeling they will. Uh, St. John actually enters this game on a losing note, but they sat down a lot of key players after they'd already secured a spot in the championship game, just making sure nobody was uh, hurt going into the final. Gerard Glenn taking that risk. St. Mike's last won the Memorial Cup in 1961. Reinvented the modern version is borrowing from that cowboy hat theme from 50 years ago. Saddle up, boys. It's time to see if a horse led to water will drink from the cup. Hi, I'm John Garrett. I played for the Peterborough Peets for two years, and it was called the Ontario Hockey Association way back then, not the Ontario Hockey League. I played for Roger Nielsen, and that was a thrill and a privilege. Uh, one of the best coaches ever at any level that he coached, and especially with young players. He treated us all with dignity and respect, and uh, he made us go to school, and he made us be uh, all-round people, not just athletes. I got picked up by the Montreal Junior Canadiens my first year that I was in Peterborough, and I got to play in the Memorial Cup, and back then, the Memorial Cup was one of the toughest trophies to win because you had to play a series. It wasn't just a tournament and the Montreal Canadiens, Junior Canadiens, won the Memorial Cup that year, and uh, we had a stacked team, there was no doubt about that, but uh, we beat the Quebec Ramparts on the way, and they had Guy Lafleur, we had Gilbert Perro, and I got to play most of the games in the playoffs for the Junior Canadiens, and my name's on the cup with a rented team. Did he say, just a tournament? We had, I don't know. we had to win a series, I, I, not I, just a tournament. I couldn't get past that hairdo to, to really listen <laughs> I, to anything he said. I would have swore he grew up in Vancouver, the way he cheers <laughs> for the Canucks. I didn't know he was an Ontario guy. But there was that time, that period, when John played and, and even the years after, where you could pick up players going to one oh, of yeah, these tournaments. Right. Well, and, and you know, even in tonight's game, you know, Jacob DeSeres was a guy who played for Brandon last year, and he's playing for St. John this year. So there is still some of that movement. But back then, when you could go out and get a guy to strengthen your team, it really made a difference. Now, did you not play for the Montreal Junior Canadiens as well, Doug? Played for the Montreal Junior Canadiens, but it was a couple of years after that Memorial Cup championship team. They sort of took a little bit of a drop off. <laughs> I replaced Parole and Martin, and it just wasn't come, see, didn't come seem come to be the same when, team. When's your, when's your feature going to be shown, huh? <laughs> but John did bring up that it's one of the toughest trophies to win, and Nick, you got very close to this tournament. Yeah, on, on two occasions. One was to host the Memorial Cup in 87. We lost in a seven-game series to the Oshawa Generals, and then to face them a month later in the OHL final. But these guys all know that this is a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It doesn't come very often. You know, you look at a guy like uh, uh, Gregory Campbell. Gregory Campbell, uh, going into this year, hasn't played one meaningful playoff uh, game unless you go back eight years to the Memorial Cup win with the Kitchener Rangers. So, guys, take advantage of it while you can.
By the way, you played for the North Bay Centennials. We want to get that, that shout out because we've talked to a lot of people who say that they were there for yeah. all 62 goals that one year when you set the franchise <laughs> he, record. He was the North Bay Centennial. Just ask him. Oh, man, the stroking. The oh, Montreal Junior Canadiens and North Bay yeah. Centennial. I got nothing David, over what do you got for us? We got, a I got nothing. we got rec leaguers on each side. <laughs> <laughs> Bookends. Good, Bookend rec leaguers. Good, serious, intense rec leaguers who are looking forward to a game tonight involving two different styles of game. Who do you think has the advantage taking into consideration uh, the the time off that St. John has had, Doug? Well, I, I think St. John are 100% healthy, and I think that's a real plus. They had some bangs, uh, bumps and bruises. They had to get better, and they are 100% healthy. They're also a team that can score. They're a frightening team to play against because they've got a lot of game breakers. I think the advantage goes to St. John, but look, never underestimate Mississauga. Dave Cameron's team plays hard. Mississauga all out to try to give Dave Cameron and Casey Zizekas that one big win this year. They've got a guy that knows how to get it done, Justin Shuck. Rob Fultz. Thank you very much. Now, 10 days ago, I asked you what it was like to play in the three Memorial Cup. Now I'm going to ask you what it's like to play for a third MasterCard Memorial Cup. I can't explain it. I mean, uh, at the beginning of the year, I never would have thought uh, I'd have this opportunity, and Dave Cameron traded for me, and and now, now I'm here playing for a third. Starting to get the sense that you guys are playing major hockey now. It's a very slow start to this tournament, but now I'm feeling that you guys are in a groove. Yeah, as the tournament went on, we, we got better, and our specialty teams are starting to get better too, so we're starting to roll with it, and uh, I like how we're playing. How important is it for your team to set the tempo? Yeah, we got to come out hard, physical, and take the body and take away their speed and, and time in the neutral zone. Justin, enjoy this third time. Thank you. Justin Shug is trying to win a third MasterCard Memorial Cup. Darren? Nick Kiprios, how important is it to have a player like that who's won this tournament before, given that we spend so much time talking about the Cameron Sezikis losses of the yeah. World Junior and the OHL final? I would think a lot of the players would be leaning towards him, especially today, to uh, go back to those memories, those short memories of being in Windsor and, and winning so he's going to be relied heavily you know you talk about junior or the NHL in terms of le uh, leaning on your veterans it's even that much more important at the junior level because there's only a window of what two or three years that you can lean on a guy like this so hey good luck to him only trying to become the second guy in history to win three in a row just a quick note the two oldest hockey fans in Prince Edward Island the Ziggs were 92 oh, and 93 years of age watching the game tonight did they tweet the you the islands <laughs> of buzz they tweet they, they tweeted me yeah at, at their age and they it's know amazing, more about tweeters. technology than you do uh, of course the master Card memorial cup and the memorial cup trophy steeped in history the master Card memorial cup trophy was created in 1919 and was originally dedicated to honor the soldiers who died fighting for Canada in World War 1 last year at CFB Shiloh just outside of Brandon Prior to the MasterCard Memorial Cup, it was rededicated to honor all soldiers who died fighting for Canada in any conflict. Well, today, there's still lingering effects in Brandon, Manitoba from the Assiniboine River flood of unprecedented proportions that began on May 9th. Water level has only recently began to recede with the help of approximately 1,800 regular and reserve members of the Navy, Army, and Air Force stationed or based in Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan, BC, and Ontario. The military repaired Assiniboine River and Portage Diversion Dikes, monitoring them from the air and on the ground. And thanks to their efforts and the stabilization of the situation, the Canadian military has started to wind down their flood fighting effort. City of Brandon, you hosted this tournament a year ago and you're once again in our thoughts tonight. The MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship game, St. John against Mississauga, is coming up on Rogers Sportsnet. Two face-offs before we get going. The first will be ceremonial. Let's go to Sportsnet's Tony Ambrosio. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome for tonight's ceremonial puck draw. Representing MasterCard Canada, please welcome Senior Vice President of Global Products and Solutions, Richard McLaughlin. From the hit TV show Dragon's Den, Jim Trelevine. Representing St. Michael's College School, Father Joe Redekin. The Mayor of Mississauga, Hazel McCallion. The owner and president of your Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, Mr. Eugene Melnick. 
The vice president of hockey operations for the National Hockey League and a former major, Jim Gregory. Please welcome the family of E.J. McGuire, his wife, Terry, and their daughters, Jacqueline and Erin. The Memorial Cup was originally dedicated in 1919 in memory of soldiers lost in the First World War. Last year, the trophy was rededicated in honor of all the men and women who have died serving their country. This man enrolled in the infantry on August 26, 1975, and has served four tours, Cyprus, Bosnia, Croatia, and Afghanistan. Give a warm welcome to Area Chief Warrant Officer Stapleton. A 26-year veteran of the Canadian Forces and an Army Logistics Officer. He finished an overseas tour with NATO forces in the Balkans in 1999 and most recently returned from a nine-month deployment to Kandahar, Afghanistan. Please welcome Lieutenant Colonel McNeil. Our next guest has been serving in the military since 1976. He assumed command of Joint Task Force Land Force Central Area in July 2010. Please welcome Brigadier General Lewis. He joined the Canadian Forces in May of 2004 and enlisted in the Royal Regiment of Canada. He volunteered for service in Afghanistan and arrived in Kandahar province in April 2010 as part of Task Force Kandahar's Force Protection Platoon. As the commander of a light armored vehicle, his duties included escorting convoys to ensure their safe arrival. In June, while conducting a foot patrol to check culverts for the presence of improvised explosive devices, his patrol was ambushed by insurgents. He was returning fire to protect the patrol when an RPG struck one of the nearby light armored vehicles, causing an explosion and flames. He was struck by fragments which resulted in wounds to his face and neck and significant injury to his left hand and arm. As a result of these wounds, he will be awarded the Sacrifice Medal. He will also be awarded the General Campaign Medal to recognize his service in Afghanistan. He is looking forward to returning to duty and transferring to the regular force. Please give a very warm welcome to Master Corporal Sadarov. With the two captains, please come to center ice now for the ceremonial puck draw. At this time, we'd ask that you please rise and remove your hats and join 2nd Lieutenant Newlands in the singing of our national anthem. Flight party. Oh. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. True patriot love in all thy sons command. Quand on passe pour te le payer, il se porte la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants.
we stand on God. Playing for the Memorial Cup on Memorial Day weekend in the United States. Hello and welcome to those watching in America on NHL Network. Let me introduce you to Peter Labardius and Sam Cosentino. Darren, thank you so much. Get right into the action. Log on to sportsnet.ca to watch live streaming of our wireless camera between the benches and on the ice. It can only be seen at sportsnet.ca. And the starting goalies for tonight's title game of the 93rd MasterCard Memorial Cup brought to you by Dickies, the official workwear partner of the Western Hockey League, the Ontario Hockey League, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. They're the host team, but for tonight's purposes, they're the visitors. Mississauga goes with 19-year-old Toronto product J.P. Anderson. Anderson turned aside 28 of 29 in a 3-1 semi-final win over Kootenay on Friday. And at the other end for the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League champions in his second straight MasterCard Memorial Cup final as a starter. One year ago, Jacob Desairs was tending the twine for the Brandon Wheat Kings. Now, he finds himself in a enormous situation for St. John. Dave Cameron, the head coach, two gentlemen from Prince Edward Island trying to leave here tonight with the big prize. Great friends and when you add assistant coach Mike Kelly into the mix, all three of them really good friends. For the next 60 minutes or more, friendship thrown right out the window. When they collided on opening night, St. John won the hockey game four to three. No one will ever remember that when this eve is all said and done. And we are underway. Championship Sunday of the MasterCard Memorial Cup is Stephen McCauley with Mike Thomas and Alexander Beauregard start for Gerard Glenn, St. John Cedar. Percy and McCauley battle in the corner along with Tyler. In front, Beauregard an opportunity and he fans from both range. We expected St. John with a long layoff. They haven't played since Tuesday to struggle early. Not in the opening 30 seconds. Shot to Percy. For the captain, Casey Sizikis. Attempted hit on Beauregard, and McCauley takes over. Sixth round pick of the St. Louis Blues. Mike Thomas, the captain, in his fifth year, in his final game of Major Junior Hockey. It's been all five years of the St. John Sea Dogs, so he has seen everything the good, the bad, and the ugly. Kevin Gagne fails to make the connection with Stanislav Galiev as the St. John. Top line of Huberto, Phillips, and Galiev on the ice, and Huberto nearly stole the puck. Riley breaks with Rod Flick and Chris D'Souza in deep on the four check, and Bolio Conley finds Huberto. Pass Galiev, a touch for J.P. Anderson. Brace dealing with Huberto. And Huberto has more than lived up to his high draft status in this event. Rated number third amongst North American skaters by NHL Central Scouting. No question, the longer you play and the more important games you play in, the ability for your stock to rise increases. He's sick, pulled over by Jeannie Wise. He's been a physical force in this event for Mississauga. He wears number 12 and came over in a trade from the Peterborough Peas. Cramarosa in deep. Wise. Cramarosa wrap around in the first stop for Jacob Desairs and some pushing and shoving after the whistle. As you would expect as both teams try and get the nerve out and establish themselves physically. Wise taken to the ice. Nice calm and calmly by the officials. Jacob Desairs right there as well. And you know, one thing Dave Cameron often preaches is being tough on the opposition's netminder. And for Gerard Gallant, he'll have a look here. And it looks as if there's going to be a penalty called against Ryan Teasing. Gerard Gallant last year said it hurt so much to lose to Moncton in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League final that when we showed up this time around, we had our focus not clearly on winning the President Cup 
but the MasterCard Memorial Cup. That's how much confidence he had in his hockey club going into this season. 209, roughing is the call on St. John native Ryan Thiessen in Mississauga with the game's first power play. They were two out of seven on the power play in the first meeting of these teams. Simone Dupre back in the lineup. His wrister, he scores! Short-handed, Simone Dupre has opened the scoring. Well, Mississauga gets caught at the St. John blue line. And you'll see a great job here by Thomas as he comes out to pinch off Mark Canton. The puck goes up in the air, and Simone Dupre, with that great speed, decides he wants to take it the distance. Now, Stuart Percy does a good job keeping him to the outside, but once he pulls it back, he lets it go in a hurry and goes up top, blocker side on J.P. Anderson. First goal and point of the tournament for the first round pick of the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2009. Simone Dupre. And Dupre knows what it's like to play in a big game. He was a member of Canada's silver medal winning team of the World Junior in Buffalo this year. A short handed goal to kick it off early. Sezikis still 114 to go on the power play, and McCauley a chance to move it up. On the stick of Michael Kirkpatrick, oh. right back to McCauley, and he had a step in a lane. Now a wraparound, and Anderson comes across the green. You know, St. John has done a really good job here. I know Gerard Gallant really stressed the start of this hockey game. You can't get a better start than what's happened. Can't. In his third MasterCard Memorial Cup, number 22. He won the title at Windsor last spring. Flick the shooting. Desairs clears it off of words for Hubert Owen de Prey. And it's sent out of his own by the trustworthy Pierre Durapo. And for my money, he's been the best defensive defenseman in this tournament, Pierre Durapo. 25 to go in the game. First power play. De Prey short handed is open to score. Nathan Bully to Stephen Anthony making his Memorial Cup debut. He's been out of the lineup since game one of the league final with an knee injury. Here, let's take you back to the goal here. Simone Dupre is right here. And what he'll do is read the play and try to take Justin Shug out and then follow it up the ice. Watch this. Justin Shug is the half ball guy. As he reads the play, he gets by Shug. He's able to pick up that loose puck in the neutral zone and he is off and running. Great speed, great shot by Simone Dupre. A great shorthanded, unassisted, at 2.47 opens the score. Jack Phillips coming off a two-assist effort in the final round Robin game versus Kutney on Tuesday. Corey Giro, the Kramer Olsen, held up by Gabriel Moore, and Dylan DeMello takes over. Gallia will rifle it in. Kramer Olsen. Runs into Huberto, who helps to pick his pocket. Hero, Bramarosa, and Rise, and they'll clear it in and head on on a change. Hello, Gally. Gally drops it neatly for Bore. And Eric Jelen on the second round pick of the New Jersey Devils. Cross corner shooting. Fleming to Flick, who has two game winners in this event with Grace and D'Souza. Rob Fleck, grabbing the net, rebound, sensational stop on D'Souza by Desair. Fleming fakes the shot. Brett Fleming, still with a puck, goes to the left point in person, swings it, D'Souza. Grace, on the board, D'Souza to the right point in Fleming. Block shot by Phillips and a beauty. Riley Brace, and Bull, you sends it on the boards for Yerko, and he'll backhand it out. Some stop by Jacob Desairs. You want to talk about vindication, he was in for all nine goals in that loss to win there last year. As a member of the Brandon Wheat Kings in a 9-1 setback. From Patrick nearly stole, here's shot, but they pray right on top of him at the line. St. John doesn't look like they've been off for any amount of time. You go all the way back to Tuesday. It's amazing to think how much jump the St. John Sea Dogs have. 
And speaking of jumping, being sharp, how about Jacob Desaires? Quite a save and quite a shot from a guy headed to the next level. Gerard Gallant, St. John Sea Dogs with an early 1-0 lead. You said this morning you thought special teams were going to be in importance, and they certainly were early. Yeah, that was a great goal by Simone Desprey, jumping up shorthanded, and he made an excellent shot. So definitely a big kill for us, and uh, obviously a bonus getting that shorthanded goal. A lot has been said about the time off that you've had between games. It doesn't seem to be a concern for your guys. I'm real happy right now. I mean, the way we started, it's very good for us, so I'm happy with it. Thank you, Coach. 1-0 the score for St. John. Pete, Sam? And the person you thought it might affect the most this layoff would be Jacob Desaires. He did not play in the final round robin game as Matthew Corbet got the start. Parente shot blocked by Anthony. A draft pick of the Vancouver Canucks. Dylan a backhand to deep. Scott Oak racing in after it. one of those nine draft eligible players on this youthful St. John team. Parente into the attacking zone, in shot, blocked up by Anthony. And Danik Doce shuffles it one-handed, it's leading to a two-on-one. Oh, lost the handle, now he'll shoot it. Anderson, a pad save, Anthony. He doesn't look any worse for wear, either early. Amazing. After the layoff. Shelling off, that's tip, but goes wide. Anthony, quick to it. Suffered a knee injury in game one of the Quebec League final versus Gatineau. Oddly enough, while injured at this tournament, signed the contract with the Vancouver Canucks. Polio shoots it in and scampers after. Polio with great speed. Off the bench is Corey Giro and he'll rifle in the rolling puck. A lot of times you'll see Mississauga do that. Take it from the strong side to the weak side and leave that guy far open right by the red line. McCauley. On the shooting, St. John's been very aggressive with their four check. Percy settles it down to Fleming, the Washington fifth rounder. McCauley to the blue line, and Kevin Gagne moves laterally, hits Richter, and a glove save by Anderson. Let's go back to uh, Jacob Desaires and the great save he made. Rob Flick has deceptive speed and good strength, so here he's able to turn the corner on Nathan Beaulieu. That's a good chance, but this one is better. D'Souza right there, and look at the right pad of Jacob Desaires. He comes out and surely, surely stops a goal here on D'Souza. We were that close to being tied at one. And Desaires, 47 saves in a 3-2 overtime win on Monday over Owen Sound that propelled this team directly into the title game. Boy, nearly Lost the hand of Galliev with Phillips and Jonathan Huberto. Huberto and Phillips. Good give and go. Galliev can't cut off the cycle. And Riley racing outlet, but he hit Phillips with it. Susan out of play. And Phillips, whose defensive game has really come a long way in the last season. And he's magic with a puck. Great hands for Phillips. Into the zone with Huberto and Sezikis can't tie him up. Some help from Canton. Kisek joins the fray and bumped by Casey Sezikis. And a penalty for kneeing upcoming to Mississauga. Well, Dave Cameron looks on watching his team trail by one and now will be short-handed. We talked about off the top of the broadcast how this young St. John team would react to this pressure situation. And you look at all of these guys draft eligible. Add Jason Cameron to the mix who's not playing because he's injured. You want to talk about a group of young guns? The St. John Sea Dogs are all about that. Aiden Kelly, you saw where he was rated. A healthy scratch for this game as Anthony's return paved the way, unfortunately, for him to be in that situation. Jelena on a St. John power play. Their first of the game. Kirkpatrick, Tisic, Yurko, who's been a star in this tournament. Up front, Kirkpatrick battling. Really hounding pucks well right now, St. John. And Fleming an opening, and he shoots at the length of the ice. St. John was three for eight versus Mississauga on the power play in the tournament opener in the 4-3 triumph. And Kirkpatrick a little anxious. 
You know, Peter, when you look at uh, Gerard Gallant and the job he's done, pretty much everyone that they brought to the tournament, Devin Olivia Dares, Jacob Edwards as a backup, Jason Cameron, Spencer McDonald, Jason Seed, all these guys got to play as a benefit of winning the first two games. And so they drew in, uh, all these players did, for that third round-robin game. That ended up being a loss, but at that point, they'd already sealed their fate knowing they had a trip to the final. I think when you're able to play, all the guys you bring, you really help galvanize your team, and it helps everyone pull together on the same rope at the same time. Don't be surprised if this bunch isn't right back in Shewin again at this time next year. Dave Gray who's open the score and Huberto in the slot. Off the ski to Dylan DeMello. Percy. Bonnie Phillips. High in the air. And Cremorosa uses the board to send it to center. Stanislav Galliad, the draft pick of the Washington Capitals. Reminds many of Alexander Seven into the zone. Off the stick of Percy. And Gallia can really shoot the puck. That's one thing St. John has no issue doing at all. Turning back and neutralize, getting the Rouge group going, and knowing that the team speed will help catch up eventually. When you do that often enough, Peter, you'll catch the opposition or the defending team standing still right around their own blue line, and that can be dangerous. There's 20 seconds to go in St. John's first opportunity with a man advantage. Mike Thomas on right wing to Beauregard. Backhander on Chug. And taking care of business is Anderson. The St. John Sea Dogs have not played since Tuesday. And we go back in the recent history of this event with a five day rest. Four of the five teams that have been in that situation have all come back to win, except for the Kelowna Rockets, beaten by the beautiful team put together by Warren Reichel, the 2009 Windsor Spitfires. Boy, didn't that team break all the rules and make history? The only team to ever rebound from an 0-2 beginning to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And remember, they went to overtime against Drummondville in the semifinal. Flick, a three-on-two develops. The Riley Brakes returns the favor to Susan on the cycle for Brakes. Centers it, Flick in the slot. Give Mike Thomas a lot of credit for preventing a scoring chance. But tried to bring it to the forehand. Durazio, that was tipped on its way to Desairs. By Fleck. Desairs looks like he's ready to atone from what happened a year ago. Thank you so much, Ken, as you look at the junior hockey junkies and what we want you to cast your peepers on Tuesday. America's Got Talent. There are the times. Watch it all on City TV. And these young men also have plenty of talent. No question about that. Good start for the St. John Seedoff. This is all trying to keep things at bay here. Simone de Prey opened the scoring shorthanded to Smith Kelly, who's had a great tournament. Shoots it off the side of the net, and Desairs takes no chances. And more pushing and shoving with 8.43 to go in this opening period. Time Noro for our top scores brought to you by Prestone. When you own it, press stone it. Andrew Shaw, the Owen Sound attack, continues to lead the way. Matt Fraser picked up six points. Devontae Smith Pelly in the running for the tournament MVP. Eakin Reinhardt Yurko and Mike Halmo rounding out the top scores. Halmo and Yurko with five apiece. Really interesting look for Dave Cameron there as Cramarosa goes to the box. He wise and Smith Pelly went out as a line together. And Dave Cameron is incensed. Referees tonight Dominic Bechard from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and the Western Hockey League's Referee of the Year, Matt Kirk, handling those duties in this championship affair and a second straight power play for St. John. Huberto in the slot, pull you a shot and just fired wide with the hard wrister. Zizekas intercepted by Bollier. Really have to keep an eye on that weak side defenseman. In that case, it was Nathan Bollier, but they have no problem jumping that guy up to get a, a good shot on goal and take it down to the net. Fleming tied up, moved in. To Shug and Justin Shug shoots at the length of the ice. 
Apre, his first goal since scoring twice in game two of the league final versus Gatineau. And here, he's forced offside. Well, Nathan Beaulieu jumping up on the rush, it's uh, not always the easiest thing to do, especially when this happens to you. Kent gets the stick up in his grill, and you can see Beaulieu just kind of keeled over. No call on the play, and he will go to the bench with Jeff Kelly and get some reparations. You can see under his name, he made a big difference in the opening night win. Gallius, with a minute to go on the power play. Percy brought down by Yurko, who scored in all three games that St. John performed in. To the line and Jelen, quickly to Kevin Gagne. Off Riley breaks in the shooting lane and out of play. Ed Gallia wide open. How about Thomas Yurko, Peter? You know, we've watched him going back to, to last year and just how much his game has changed. He seems like a guy who earlier uh, coming to North America had trouble adjusting the physical style of play. Well, that has seemingly changed here. He has been excellent here at the Cup, going into dirty areas every once in a while, initiating physical contact, which we didn't see much of last year. I think everyone knows about his magical hands and his goal-scoring ability. Has four goals in the tournament. Anthony Nifty pass and a great play by Anderson to break up the pass attempt for Yurko. Jelena, that big block. And Anderson again with a save. Well, when Jelena can really fire the puck, he gets everything behind a big, tall guy, a lot of leverage on the stick. And you'll see this wide open opportunity, but what a great job by J.P. Anderson, just sticking a stick out. I think Yurko would have liked to have been more aggressive there going after that puck. They pray to Bullyu. Bullyu, a wrister, picked away by Anderson. And Jamie Wise slides it out of his own. And a great play by Fleming there. He cleared the rebound. He asked the goaltender to make the first save. You need your defenseman to clear it. Fleming did. For Patrick to Zach Phillips. Phillips in the slot. Big rebound. And a backhander by Kirk Petrick who went wide to the target. Hubert O. Phillips. He scores. First of the tournament for Zach Phillips. And it's 2 nothing. St. John. Well, if you're wondering at all whether the young guns would be nervous, I think they answered the question. They put the old veteran Kirk Patrick alongside Hubert O. and Phillips. And it works out. There's Kirkpatrick entering the zone. Now, J.P. Anderson makes the original save, but it's the rebound that causes the problem. Kirkpatrick keeps it alive. He'll then pick up the, can the puck and quick passes from Huberto to Phillips to finish it off. I mean, give Kirkpatrick all the credit because he got the original shot on goal and then hounded down that rebound for Phillips to pick up his first of the tournament. The product of Fredericton, New Brunswick. Turns on the red light for the first time. The champions of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League have flexed their muscle in this opening frame. For 324 goals during the regular season, that was first by a mile in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And won 58 times in 68 games in the process. One of the best ever seasons in Major Junior history when you look at winning percentage. Took the pedal off the metal there in the last couple of games, knowing that things were wrapped up, otherwise 60 wins. Correcte Desiris took a peek, but he hasn't. Well, Jacob Desiris is such a likable guy. He was drafted by Philadelphia going back to the OA draft, but was not signed. And so after last year's loss while well, with the Brandon Wheat Kings. He felt he wanted to come back and have a strong game and here he makes another good save although he wasn't completely sure where it was. And for Desairs, getting the opportunity in a different league and a different team really changed his mindset. He got away from a situation that was somewhat unkind to him there last year in Brandon and his rebound quite well this year. Thank you very much. Percy a wrist shot over time of the net. Phillips goal occurred at the exact second that Cramarosi penalty inspired. Not a power play goal. Phillips first from Kirkpatrick and Huberto. 2-0 St. John. They pray. He cuts off the cycle, runs into Jordan Mayer, and another penalty on the way to Mississauga. Anthony, the cross-corner shoot in to McCauley. Fleming. 
St. John in command and about to enjoy another power play. Hardest working player in the game is brought to you by Dickies, the official workwear partner of the Western Hockey League, the Ontario Hockey League, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Well, Zach Phillips establishing early on that he has no trouble playing in all three zones. A good job there in the neutral zone turnover. And then in the defensive zone, a blocked shot. He would continue to make things happen offensively as he gets a shot on goal there, but then would be the recipient of this pass from Jonathan Huberto to pick up his first goal of the tournament. And his fourth point at three assists coming in. And another power play opportunity for St. John. Again, it's Huberto, Phillips, Kirkpatrick, Dave and Nathan Bullion. Jamie Wise wins the battle on the boards. He sends it out. This is a critical juncture in the game. I know it's early. Three would be a long way back. For the whole team. Yeah, I'd have to agree, Peter. And when I look at Gerard Garan at the TV timeout, he was really intense and in drawing up a play and thinking here that if his team can get one, he can really step on the throat of Mississauga St. Michael's mate. Herberto enters the zone. Jonathan Huberto. Kirkpatrick. Down low for Phillips. Good stick by Dylan DeMello. And Cramarosa diving a second try and at least sends it out of play. His role has uh, increasingly become more important for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Now Dave Cameron loves to use him in that penalty kill role, but we saw him get a spin on that top line earlier on in the tournament. And now Dave Cameron will do a little coaching as Cramarosa has ice time has really picked up since even going back to the Ontario Hockey League Championship. Cramarosa with great speed. He's rated for the upcoming National Hockey League draft. Yurko and Sizikis. Yurko with those good hands away from the Majors captain. Yurko, Galiev, and Anthony now. Shot with lots of time. A rolling puck and makes no mistake. Take it to Sears with a huge save early on Chris D'Souza. They could have easily tied it at one. And really would have changed the complexion of this game and probably thrown the momentum swing back in the favor of Mississauga. Galiev to Kevin Gagne. Knocked off his stick by Shud. Suzuki spilled at center. Galiev. Toe drag. Percy wasn't bond. Not for a second. Oh, what a tournament for Stuart Percy. For the fans in the building. None too pleased after Sezikis was spilled. Just 13 to go in the St. John power play. Gabrielle Bure and Yurko. Yurko finds McCauley. Intercepted by Brakes. Riley Brakes enters the zone. Trying to split the D to Souza. Off the stick of Bure. Chris D'Souza, his wrister, no trouble, blocker to the corner by Jacob Desir. Oh, Grace, what a kind of jump he has in this game. He's been all over the joint. DeMello to Mark Canton. Canton off the skate. Some pressure for the host team. Grace protects it well. Canton elects to send it deep. These are the types of shifts Dave Cameron's team excels in. And Yurko with good stick position to force it out of the zone. At the very least, you get some top guys out there like McCauley and Yurko. You force them to play defense. And the better opportunity that presents when they don't have the puck. Maxim Kitson. Jelena to Alexander Beauregard. A little hook on Beauregard. And Thomas in his skates sends it in. They pray for him. And Phillips has the goals. They pray. He continues to look like he's ready as early as next year to find a way onto the Pittsburgh Penguins. Thomas a big collision with Devontae Smith Pelling. Thomas for Keeson. Bumped and bodied by Corrente. Gets it to the line. Gagne anticipates. Thomas and Corrente. The veteran Thomas wins that battle and Ross checking the call from referee Dominic Bichard. 
And the parade to the penalty box continues for Mississauga, as it did in the first meeting between these two clubs on opening night. And Demonte smith pelly better be careful. Or he'll end up in there longer than he's bargained for. He comes back to help out. He and Thomas have been going at each other all shift long. And in that dangerous area, you see smith pelly come back to knock him off the puck. I mean, that's a cross-check. I don't know what else to tell you. I know the fans don't like it here, but it's pretty evident. And Mike Thomas and the St. John Sea Dogs have been off so long it's that time to shave the beard and grow it right back. They'll need hedge clippers to deal with that. Four straight power play. Phillips on this the team from Kirkpatrick. Couldn't handle it cleanly. Michael Kirkpatrick to Jack Phillips with Huberdeau in front. Huberdeau and Anderson got a crease to crease. Before Fleming spilled Jonathan Huberdeau with a big hit. Fleming and Shug sends it down the boards. Boy, St. John just doing a great job chasing down loose pucks now and winning a lot of battles, especially in the offensive zone. Remind you of any other game that you watched them play in these playoffs? Well, Gerard Gallant talked about game three in the Gatton series, a 5 0 win in which they were almost perfect. On the power play now, Huberto looks at Phillips, hangs on to it. Elected to try the seam and hit Cramarosa and it allows Mississauga to clear it down the ice. Mississauga trying to get out of the period, trailing by just a pair. Gagne to Stanislav Gallia runs into Stephen Anthony. Jelen it out. Jelen ah! enters the attacking zone to Yerko. His wrist are not a lot on it. A block and clear by Percy. Shares paddle down. Grace nearly stole it. Now he does backhander under the share. They poke it in. They're gonna say the whistle blew here for sure, and immediately Matt Kirk calling this thing off. And the, what'll happen is the puck is actually underneath the pad of the Sears. Do you know if it's across the line or not? I don't think so. Let's get a listen in here if they decide to go upstairs. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And it was pretty clear that Matt Kirk had blown the whistle first. Underneath Jacob Desairs and Riley Brace nearly found the net shorthanded. Yeah, and it wasn't until the whistle had blown where Brace had pushed the pads knowing that the puck was underneath there. The whistle blows for surely. Fleming another step up. This one against Yurko as it's backhanded by Teasing out of play with Six seconds really left in the period. Watching the prospect, Brett Fleming, one of three here. He looks across the ice to see Stanislav Galiev and Cody Eakin, who gave it his all and surely won't be long before Eakin makes it to the National Hockey League. What a bright future for an already good hockey team in Washington. Fleming undersize, terrific skater, just under six feet, and really works hard physically. He's a very strong player for his size. Oh, well, just when you were worried about the five-day layoff, the St. John Sea Dogs come out and pick up goals from Depre and Phillips to lead it 2-0. St. John, full value for a 2-0 advantage, guys, after 20. The four complete days away from the rink and game action has not hurt the QMJHL champions one bit. Jacob Desairs is perfect, and St. John's has a sizable advantage when you've given what's at stake in this championship game. Back with Darren Millard, Nick Kiprios, Doug McLean, and Damian Cox. I know that the officials have a job to do, but this is the second straight game involving these two teams where they've had a strong influence. Boy, oh boy, and, and you know, and some of that you might wonder about the ticky-tack penalties. The penalties out of the scrum, I think, would be one that a lot of people would debate about. Do you really need to call that in a championship game? But then there's the other penalties by, you know, St. Mike's. We gotta wonder about well, what in the world are they thinking? Now, so you call one out of, you pick a guy out of a scrum. We've seen that before. That, and that ends up actually being a shorthanded goal by Doug McLean's hero, Simon Dupre. Yeah, and, and I'm really impressed with Dave Frey. I mean, he has been a steadying influence on the back end. St. John have played real well. 
because he's settled them down back there. He's done a nice job. And like D uh, Damon said, scores that short and a goal. But he is a steady and rock but back there. Is, is sending a message taking one guy out like that I think that's the necessary idea. right well, now? He, he did that. He balanced it out. But then he's sitting there going, these guys don't learn. They don't learn. Well, and St. Mike's right after that came and did another one after mm -hmm. another scrum. So, again, I think you have to wonder, what is St. Mike's thinking in this game? Four minor penalties in the first period against an awesome power play. Yeah. One, you know, you got uh, the scrum, you got one for kneeing, one for cross-checking. You know, I mean, what, Dave Cameron's got to have more control of his boys than this. Well, you know what, and it's got to be the players on the ice that have really got to do it. They've got to settle it down. The leadership on the team on the ice have really got to take charge here. And as I said about Dave Prey, I mean, he is a guy that is settling his team down. That's why they're playing solid. You've got leadership like that on the back end. And Jordan Lance talked to me all week about how important this guy is. Here he goes head to head with the Sezikas line, and he is one of those steadying in Influences. He moves the puck. He's got tremendous puck patience. This guy's going to be a good National Hockey Laker. No doubt about that. Mac, if Dupre was their best defenseman, I'll tell you who their best forward was, Zach Phillips. And he's yeah. a guy who we haven't talked much about uh, in this tournament so far, and with good reason. Uh, he hadn't scored up until this championship game, but this is the St. John's second leading uh, point producer during the season. Almost 100 points this year. Highly regarded in the NHL draft, and I think he showed everybody why. He's a great two-way player. He's dangerous. Here's a nice block in terms of a St. Mike's uh, breakout. He does the little things well, but he can also put the puck in the net, and that's exactly what he did in that first period. Look at him. He knows where to stand. He waits for it, and there's a big goal there. And Zach Phillips, I'm and telling you, it was going to be a game breaker and here. And what about the skill of Ubedo and that quick little bump pass right out to Phillips, who was set in the slot? At the end of that period, St. Mike's Majors just begging for anything to go their way, saying, please, yeah. uh, they need a break. give us one. Uh, right break. now, they're down 2 nothing after 20. A year ago, Jacob Desaires trailed by two after the first period. Now he's up a pair at that beautiful save. CHL president David Branch is coming up next as we broadcast from the Hershey Center and the championship game of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. By your local insurance broker. Your best insurance is an insurance broker. At the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario, some of our Canadian military are watching. St. John with a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes. One of the perks of my job is talking to Lily Tomovich, who is the head of marketing for MasterCard Canada every year. And the involvement of MasterCard has been such a benefit to the CHL. I know it's a partnership you guys really enjoy. Well, we are incredibly proud of our partnership with the Canadian Hockey League. It's been over 15 years. We really believe in giving back into the communities where we work and live, and we couldn't figure a better way to do it than through junior hockey. And to get a sense as well, that relationship continues to grow. Absolutely. We're really very, very happy. I mean, Mississauga this year has been an incredible tournament. The fans have been wonderful. The volunteers have been just out outstanding. So we're very, very proud of the tournament this year. Lily, always great to talk to you. Thank you. You as well. Lily Tomovich of MasterCard Canada. Sam Pete, ready to go for the second period. Thank you so much. First period scoring summary brought to you by Ram, the official truck of the Canadian Hockey League. Simone Depre with a shorty to get it going, and then Zach Phillips from Huberto and Kirkpatrick just as the penalty had expired. 11-9 shots on goal for St. John. And a situation where the St. John Sea Dogs look like they had just played two nights ago. Five seconds to go on a penalty to Devontae Smith Kelly. There were coincidental minors at the end of the period. Sezikis racing in after him. He just chops at Phillips, who has one of the two goals, takes over out of the reach of Jonathan Huberto, and this will be icing. Well, Peter, you know, there's some kind of fired up in the Maritimes. Harbor Station opened its doors today, and it is ram-packed in there. Apparently a roar like none had ever been heard when Simone Depre scored that shorthanded goal. So plenty of support for Gerard Galan and the St. John Sea Dogs from the home rink. Nothing has always been the safest game in this event. 
Mike Thomas. Hit hard by Parente as he shoots it in. Michael Durazio came over to January deal from the London Knights. Flick heading to the net. He's tripped up. There'll be a St. John penalty in Mississauga. About to go back to the power play. You know, Rob Flick has good size and strength. And, you know, Peter, I thought he had a really good first period, created the best chance with a shot cutting the corner of Nathan Bowley. And here he's just going for a loose puck, and Gagne gets the stick down in front of him, impeding his progress. Gagne, while flat-footed, Flick with his feet moving, draws the penalty. 19-year-old from Edmonston, New Brunswick, takes a seat. Mississauga trying to get on track on the power play. Flat pass, Miss Kelly, cut off by Durapol. Durapol, once again, steady Eddie. Justin Shug. The Devante Smith Pelly has three goals in the tournament. Stuart Percy, a wrister and a blocker, same three bounds. Smith Pelly one time it. And he shot that one. Shot sweeps it around the board. Mark Kent hustles to hold it in. Shot Percy in front of the net. And a space. Kent to Shot. Shot the hard wrister and no rebound allowed by Jacob Desir. Well, Dave Cameron making a bit of an adjustment here. And with that first power play unit, we saw the shorthanded goal with Justin Chug in the half wall, but here, he and Devontae smith Pelly switch places. And now it's Justin Chug working on the goal line. And we'll see if that has any effect, although the second power play unit has come out for Dave Cameron now. Like a clean face-off win, Durazio. Hits Nathan Boyle, took a bite out of his ankle in front. Durazio again. The Maxim tips it. Jordan Mayer for Dylan DeMello. DeMello to Kitson, the sixth round pick of the LA Kings. Kitson will handle it again. Kitson dishes off in the feet of Mayer who controls it. Now Rister stops on the short side. Kitson. Mayer. Good puck movement here. Durazio and Solon saved again by Jacob Desir. And a great job by Max Kitson. So, uh, Kitson rather, so dangerous down behind the net, but Desir is equal to the task. Peter, when we came into this event, we looked at the top team in the Canadian Hockey League, and that was the St. John Sea Dogs. But Mississauga spent five weeks at that number one spot and ended up in the final ranking third. So it's not a true one-two, but not far from it. Huberto deflects it down the ice. Huberto with yet another point. Five in the tournament. Scored the brilliant overtime winner in game two versus Owen Sound, as in game two for the Sea Dogs. Bullion. High and down the ice. St. John in the postseason of the Quebec League playoffs killed off penalties at a rate of 92.6%. Haven't been nearly as good in this event. But look good on this particular occasion. All of those special teams. Anthony off of Durazio. Anthony misses Jonathan Huberto. Off the bench comes Gallia. Finds Huberto. Jumps over his stick. And Smith Pelly, who had three points in the first meeting of these teams, flips it to the line. Boy, twists away from Canton, who is in deep on the four deck. The defenseman. Now Canton keeps it in. All over the place, Mark Canton. His third and final Master Card Memorial Cup. Cramarosa to line. Can't transfer from skate to stick. Boy, in behind Kiesick, allows Wise to keep it in. Ramarosa, Wise, and Mayer with a pretty good shift here early in the second. But swatted out by Kiesick. Ramarosa to Jordan Mayer for Wise off the heel of his stick. This is like I'm trying to push the pace. Mayer! Had some room, now he'll track it down. Mayer with the Souza camp in front. Mayer right back towards the line. Lebec pass for Cramarosa. Been a long shift 
for Kramarosa. Hits it. Stick left from a fellow Russian in Galia. Talk about those two goal leads in Mississauga starting to turn it on a little bit. D'Souza robbed in that opening period by the Sears. Kitson using his strength. He can shoot it off the goal post. Kitson wired one off the post. D'Souza. He'll shoot it. Back to Fleming on the right point. Take Kitson who just hit the bar. Kitson looks at D'Souza still hanging on. One of the best shifts of the game for the host side. Jelena leans into D'Souza. That's Kitson starting to become a factor. Called him the X Factor in our preview show. I really felt that way. With a terrific shift and a near goal, and finally Thomas will exit the zone for the champions of the Quebec Major Junior League. Well, Max Kitson with the best, second best chance for Mississauga in this game, and he comes off the half wall, and Peter, when he gets some space, he too can really let it fly. We saw it in the last two Subway Super Series, and here this one just grazes the bar. A good, hard shot from Kitson, and there's the, all the space he needs as everyone converges on him, but only after he shoots it. Kitson, a gold medalist with Russia at the World Junior. He scored the second goal in that 5-3 win and what was a 3-0 Canadian lead going to the third. Gochin. Chasing after his own shoot-in and gets to it. To the line and Gagne, Gagne on target. Anderson stopped McCauley and it comes through the crease. Bolio moves in, Nathan Bolio. His shot just wide on the short side. Smith Kelly after DeMello was dumped but made the play to shove. Shug, half a step, plays it off the skate of Casey Sezikis, and back comes the Sea Dogs. Goche. Boy, you jumped up, and now he'll head to the bench. Simone Dave Prey opened the scoring early, shorthanded with his first of the tournament. You see him back. He went off uh, his last shift. It was a bit of a shoulder issue. And missed the last game of the round, Robin, with a bout of bronchitis. There were some questions too, Peter, about an upper body injury coming into this event. They share to handle the shooting. Thomas Yerko with Kirkpatrick and Galiev. Galiev into the zone. Good stick by Corrente that time. Brace to Jordan Mayer. Mayer. Sarazio is shot. Yerko's got a partial break. Fleming will get there though, and did, but Yurko controls it. Thomas Yurko, a little delay for Gallia. With Kirkpatrick, and Fleming cuts off Gallia. Great wheel by Fleming to come back there in a partial. He is an excellent skater and a terrific competitor. Number 10 with a puck, Fleming. And he wants to relieve the pressure. Fleming and the Majors still in a hole. With Dave Cameron of Mississauga, I was struck by something you said this morning. To win anything of importance is hard. Did you have to reinstate that to your team after that first period? Yeah, I thought we lost our composure a little bit, trying to do a little bit too much, and I thought we were chasing pucks a little bit too much, and, you know, you got to give yourself a chance, and the first chance is, the first thing you got to have is composure. Thanks very much, Coach. Okay. Down by two. They're trying to get that one. Very simple instructions from Cameron. Let's get that one, boys. No question. Winning does not come easy, especially the bigger the game gets. And Mississauga finding that out here as time continues to wind down in the second period. Mississauga lost a heartbreaking game seven to Owen Sound in this building in the Ontario Hockey League Championship Series. A series they led two games to nothing under the guidance of that gentleman. And it's funny, it wasn't until Rob Flick scored the game-winning goal against Kootenai that he felt his hockey club had finally put that loss behind them. I mean, it happened right here at the Hershey Centre, game seven, overtime, after that two-nothing series lead, as you mentioned, Peter, and that was disheartening for this hockey club, and it took him a long time to get over it. Bolu off the stick of D'Souza wide. Kiesick with Phillips and Huberto now. Jonathan Huberto to Zach Phillips. Phillips couldn't walk around Percy. Gagne steps up. Kevin Gagne, sharp angle shot that goes wide and off the glass to the center. 
Dave Gray and Phillips in the first period, the reason for the 2 0 advantage. A better pushback from the whole side in period two, but as of yet, nothing to show for it. Huberto steals in the neutral zone. Huberto from St. Jerome, Quebec to Beaulieu. Beaulieu slap shot with plenty on it. And the rebound cleared away. Nice vision again by Huberto. Pulls up over the line, avoids the check, makes a perfect pass to Beaulieu. And how about the backtrack right there, too? Oh, he gives it to you in all three zones of the ice. That's what makes him a special player. Starting to think he has a pretty good chance to play at the next level, too, next season. The more and more you watch, this summer's going to be huge. I mean, he put on 15 pounds last summer. If he can have that kind of strength first again, you never know. Dave Prey takes a buck. Moving up as Canton. He's been very assertive in this period, a backhander. No trouble for Jacob Desairs. Log on to Sportsnet.ca for complete coverage of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. CHL columnist Patrick King has been filing daily reports. Oh, he shed the jacket. But the fingers are still on fire. I noticed a little grin from him. <laughs> He's got him in the corner of his eye. I know he does. Durazio! Right pass saved by Desairs, and a pretty good one in the slot race to Wise and Jelena with a good stick. There's a player that's thrown on me a lot this spring, too. Came over in a trade, Jelena did, from Shikutami this season. No Puche going the other way. Really helped to stabilize the back end for Gerard Blanc's team. Wise upended by Beauregard with McCullough. And Thomas backhands it for McCauley. They cycle now. Beauregard trying to get loose from Corrente. Corrente belongs to McCauley. McCauley in the crease area. McCauley another whack, but couldn't send it on target. Corrente moves up. To Brace, leaning on him is Jelena once again. Bure around the boards and Percy had backed out as he was just coming out onto the ice. Percy with four assists, three of them in the tournament opener against St. John. Offside is the call. You're watching the championship final of the MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Thank you, Ken. We know who Jason Spetz's favorite baseball team is, and they'll be on our network, as they always are tomorrow, when they tangle with the surprising Cleveland Indians, the Blue Jays do. Pitching matchup, Jojo Reyes and Francisco Carmona. And there are the starting times for you. Jason Spetz, an excellent CHL career, but never performed in a MasterCard Memorial Cup. They've been building early on in this career. Pretty good as a 15 year old in this league. One of the rare exception players. Fleming, Dick Kitson. Bolu, to his partner Gagne. Out of the reach of Danik Goche. Goche was shaken up earlier in the tournament when he ran into the bench gate. Yeah, and what they did as a result of that, Peter, and one other hit, they actually replaced the latches on that St. John bench. So that should not happen here tonight. Rob Fleck. Chicago fourth rounder with the Susan Kitson now. Dangerous. Off pull you right to Day Sarah, who had to be careful with that. You wonder how much of a push Mississauga was going to give here in the second period, but over the course of this season and right up to date, it's the St. John Sea Dogs that have really made their hay in that second period. A goal differential of plus 89 and a shots differential of plus 273. And so if Mississauga is going to come back here in the second period, they're going to do it against the team that has played so well in the second period all season long. Michael Kirkpatrick missed the last game of the round robin, told us this morning. He is far from 100%. Can't the shot. Turned aside by Dave Sayre. 
his 16th save of the game. Mississauga with a slight 16-13 edge in that department. Canton blew a tire. Kirkpatrick after, and he'll take a slashing minor as he knocks the stick out of the hands of London, Ontario native Dylan DeMello. No question there, a little too aggressive on the part of Kirkpatrick. And interesting, he said, was asked the question, hey, did you sleep last night? Yeah, he comes down really hard on the stick there, no question about that call. And he said, well, you know, I went to bed at around 11 o'clock, and about 1.30 I was up doing the Bert and Ernie, counting cheap and twiddling fingers and whatever else, and he just kind of mentioned quietly to his roommate, Nathan Bolyu, hey, Nate, you sleeping? No, I can't sleep either. So that's the kind of nerves that goes through these young guys' minds. Third power play for the Mainers. Shot. His shot to Sears confidently turns it aside. Devontae Smith Kelly. Dave Gray with another solid play. Yeah, and his partner Duraco with a good clear. And St. John Kelly's number 10, Michael Kirkpatrick. Power play breakout to Casey Sazikas, who's been a little quiet so far in this one. You know, and as we say, as Sazikas goes, so to the majors. He can turn that around in a hurry. Percy! Excellent right pad saved by Desiris, who continues to be dialed right in. Goche shorthanded. Anderson wants to play it and will be allowed to on the power play, which has 110 left in it. Shot chips and chases against Gagne. Bullion takes a hit from Smith Kelly. Didn't get all of them, and good thing. Garaggio cuts laterally, dishes off. Flack a chance to shoot. Now he does, and they share with another fine stop. Well, we saw a quick do that on a five on three earlier in the tournament, but this time he waits just a little too long. And had he taken this puck and shot it right away, you'll see he's got a good lane. Left side of your screen, he's got a good lane to get that puck there, but he waits too long. And by the time he steps around Gagne's stick, Desairs is already over there in good position. A good save there by the St. John keeper. Rob Flick does have a couple of goals in this tournament. Nearly made it number three. Wins a draw. Fleming. Fleck with Kitson now in front to Jordan Mayer. Kitson. Mayer peels off. Good pass to Fleming. Great shot off the skate of Flick wide. Fleming again, his high wrister almost went directly out of play. Kicks him to handle again. Had a great scoring chance early. Fleming. Garaggio in front looking for a redirect of Fleck. They pray a chance to clear McCauley and Huberto short-handed. Jonathan Huberto into the middle and just avoided Garaggio. Kitson in transition and Jelena there to cut him off at the pass as the penalty to Kirkpatrick has come to an end. Pretty good end to end. Mayer is Fleming involved with Huberto. Kitson. Huberto, a slick little pass off the skeet of Kirkpatrick. Phillips in the passing lane. Canton carries on to wide with Camarosa. Jelena will lead the rush, the defender. Anthony moves up and Fleming with an important block. Mayer, I think he wanted to ice it, but he didn't get all of it. Anthony's skating fairly well, considering he's dealing with that bad knee. Nathan Boyd scampers in. Boyd puts on the brakes, takes a hit. Brace. The flick in behind Jamie Watts. Boy, you bearing down on him as he breaks. Gallia, DeMello will run at him. And Phillips, who has one of the two goals, back in his own territory. 95 points for Zach Phillips during the regular season. Tied for six in the Quebec Major Junior League scoring parade. That's the one thing you have to watch and guard against if you're Mississauga. Sezikis up the middle, the shot in front, scores! Riley Brace and Mississauga right back in it. 
Doesn't matter who you are, you're not stopping this. And just as I was about to say, the last thing you want to do is get in the track meet with the St. John Sea Dogs. Mississauga does a great job moving the puck. All good offense to start it from the back end. Good first pass from the blue line to Sezikis. Now, three-way passing play, fantastic. You see Mississauga do that so often. They come in three abreast, then you'll get the one trailer as Shug finds Brace as the trailer who makes no mistake. And you know what, Peter? The way Brace has played, he deserves it. He has played so well the last two games here for Mississauga. Dahlia comes right back. Tess Anderson braces first of the tournament, the 19-year-old from Woodline, and his first goal since scoring in Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Final against Niagara. We've got a game now. Durapol to Thomas Yurko and Gallia. To Durapol again, a wrister, and that's kicked out by Anderson. Gallia in behind the net. Shields the defender. Stanislav Galiev. Jelena on the stick, loose in the slot area. Back to Jelena again for Durapo. He can lean in. Tipped off the Mississauga stick, and I think Anderson got a piece. Rente, the defenseman. Smith Kelly now. The Anaheim second round. Smith Kelly wrap out in front. Backhander. Excellent stop by Jacob Desir. He's looked calm after giving up the goal. Still looks calm back there for St. John. They're a call to Yurko. And icing will be the call. The life of Riley just got a lot better. Insurance goal of the game is brought to you by your local insurance broker. To score your best goal, your best insurance is an insurance broker. We go to the St. John Sea Dogs. In the line of Kirkpatrick, Huberto and Phillips goes to work in a three-way passing play ended by the draft eligible Phillips, who has been good all tournament long, but adds to his totals thanks to a great pass from Jonathan Huberto. The only insurance left for the St. John Sea Dogs in this 2-1 lead with 3.59 left in the set. Phillips, his first. Riley Brace has his first in this period from Shug and Casey Sezikis. Glove down in front. And Thomas comes out of the pile with it. Sock shoot in. Percy bumps with Danik Goche. Goche protects it nicely. Double team. Percy shovels it on the boards. Anthony now in a good tussle with D'Souza. Percy's stick held up a little bit. And Fleming a fine outlet to Kitson. Three on two developing again for Mississauga. Kitson fanned on the shot. Looked at D'Souza and elected to shoot. Kitson. Max Kitson trying to get free in front. Loose puck and nearly sent in. It's D'Souza shaking his head as he just failed to get a stick on it. And if he would have, this game was even. Brace again! Just offside, and D'Souza can't believe it. After a glorious opportunity in the first period in which he pounded it off the pad, he gets another good chance, and Max Kitson has been really effective in this game. The puck is loose right there. Nathan Beaulieu comes in at the last second to sweep this buck away because right there, D'Souza figures he's got it tied. Huberto now. Huberto shot blocked by Dylan DeMello. Ramarosa tripped up. There'll be a penalty. And Mississauga in the late stages of this period going back to the power play with an opportunity to tie the game. Gerard Gallant upset and Galiev. And when you chase pucks or you're sweeping at pucks, you put yourself in position to create the tripping. And here he gets caught standing still. Cramarosa comes across the line. And Galiev can't turn in time to catch up to him, so he trips him instead. Fourth power play upcoming. And a real sore spot for the majors. Sezikis trip. Canton thought about it. Dishes off for Shuck. Down low, Smith-Pelly saucer for Percy. It was in his skates. 
Sarah's coming up big once again, and you're wondering if that first goal would maybe start to signal what happened in the back of his mind last year while he was with the Brandon Wheat Kings. But not the case. The Sarah's has been really steady. Look at how calm he is. Standing tall to find the puck. Zizekas is there in front, but the Sarah's just just enough to look around him so he can find it and make a clean save. Dave Cameron again sends out his second unit, and they've had some good moments on the power play. Watch for Max Kitson working down by the goal line and behind the net especially. Up front with Flick and Mayer. Mayer with points in his last two outings, number 19. Hard shoot in. Desaires controls it. Can't send it by Jordan Mayer. Kitson into the corner. Back to the line with authority. And that pass, too hot to handle for Durazio. Passes it and shoots it like a pro, does Kitson. Hits it into the zone. Good feed to Mir. Now he'll head to the net. Mir, a wrist shot. Swept away by the goaltender to Sears. Garazio in the seam, but Bullio read it like a book. Nathan Bullio. Son of a coach. And it shows a loss in his play. He's a very intelligent player. Game was thrown by leaps and bounds. Tried to do too much at the start of the year, but settled his game down after about a month and a half. He's been dynamite ever since. And another important penalty kill for Gerard Polanski here late in the period with a 2 1 lead. He pray a buck from wide. He finally got him, but he still made the exit pass. Gallia. Wise drops it off Percy. To Jamie Wise. Galea will beat him to the loose puck. And he found his man, Huberto! Anderson with a key save with 11 ticks left in period two. Oh, this guy is so slick. Not only does he have great vision, Jonathan Huberto, but he has the ability to escape the check and get a good shot off. Galea with a tap pass right onto the stick of Huberto, escapes the check, and figures he'd try and use the element of surprise there with a lightning quick release. But J.P. Anderson out at the top of the crease. Jonathan Huberto with an assist in the game. Five points in this tournament. Third in the Quebec Major Junior League during the regular season. And let's not forget in scoring, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League's playoff MVP with 30 points. He just keeps getting better, Sam, and better and better. Yeah, scored some real key goals, especially in that game six with time winding down ends up picking the picking up the game time goal with about 20 seconds left and from there St. John would go on and wrap things up in double overtime. Yurko fanned on his try and shot with time winding down off of Jelena. Backhand try and a shot from Sezikis and St. John relaxed a little bit. Oh boy, that close to being tied. The only guy who didn't relax was Jacob Desairs, and good thing. Otherwise, it would have been tied, and Sezikas will have words with Desairs on his way out. Off the dump in. It's picked up and quickly sent to the front of the net. Sezikas is right there, but look at Desairs. Everyone else had just about relaxed, but Sezikas gets a jump on three St. John defenders. That close to tying it up for the Majors captain. The Majors feeling much better about themselves now, aren't they? As we send it to Darren Millard and our Hockey Central panel, guys. Mississauga's most dangerous moments have been the literally the final second of each period. Back with Nick Kiprios, Doug McLean, and Damian Cox. We haven't seen the wide open, high flying offense from St. John yet. No, we certainly haven't, and that's a bit of a surprise. And and I think we've, what we're going to see here, whichever team has the most discipline, taking too many penalties in the offensive zone. 
both teams. So the most disciplined team will win this game. Yeah, when you consider the amount of penalties that they had in the first period, I think that St. Mike's is rather comfortable going into the third period uh, down 2-1. We know that they're a strong defensive team. Uh, they were the best by Country Mile in the Ontario Hockey League led by J.P. Anderson, so just being down by one in a low-scoring affair, I think, is, 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 is okay for them. And, I mean, to me, this just feels like a St. Mike's game. It's the kind of game they've played throughout this tournament. Maybe the 2-1 you know, kind of games, the grinding games, not a lot going on at times, mm -hmm. but, boy, you could see the building change when they got that goal and made it 2-1. Real good hockey game going into the third. But I'll tell you what, St. John's got a lot of game breakers. They can change that in one shift. It was Mississauga who let a 2-1 lead in the opening game of this tournament, the round robin against St. John, get away from them, hoping it, uh, that favor is returned. Old Dutch, net a million shootouts are coming up next. The contestants are ready. So is Rob Faltz. That's coming up next. And more from the panel of the 2011 championship game of the MasterCard Memorial Cup on Roger Sportsnet. The MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And by Neil Med Sinus Rinse. Your first line of treatment of allergy and sinus problems. And all natural. As part of the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup, Mississauga wore these special commemorative jerseys. On it is Mark Diaz. He was serving in Afghanistan and died while serving there. This is a remembrance to him. If you'd like a commemorative jersey, go to the MasterCard Memorial Cup website. There's a chance for you to bid on these. And of course, all the money's raised will go to the Dominion Command Poppy Fund. Let's get ready for what we expect to be a terrific third period. Here's Peter Labardius and Sam Cosentino. Justin Shug trying to become just the second player in MasterCard Memorial Cup history to win this event three straight times, but his team trailed by a goal as we start the third period. Sezika straight move in front for Shaw, and a stick lift from the captain, Mike Thomas. And he was on the backhand. Would have been tough for him to get that puck up that quick. Chuck does have an assist on the lone goal by Riley Brace, his first. That cut the gap from 2-0 to where we stand right now. Kevin Gagne off of Shaw. And Percy reverses to Fleming. Shug up the middle. Sezikis with Smith Kelly. Devontae Smith Kelly. Stripped by Thomas. And Thomas slides it back in his own territory. Phillips, who scored the 2 0 goal. Huberto and DeMello with an excellent read. Good job at a weak side defenseman to come on over and step up into the play and break it up. Okay. The fans chanting, let's go Majors. Canton intercepted. Galliev blocked by Canton. Phillips hit pass in the skates of Jonathan Huberto. And another solid play from DeMello. He's rated for the upcoming National Hockey League draft as well. Never gets enough credit. Couldn't agree more. Brace to the left point in Canton traffic. Forming in front. Rod Fleck. Fleck versus Phillips. Phillips up ends him and takes the puck. Been out there for a while. That was close. What hasn't been at that blue line in this tournament. Scoring summaries are brought to you by Cal Tire. Brands you can't find anywhere else. Cal Tire, true service. They pray in Phillips for a 2-0 St. John lead after 20 minutes of play, but in the second period, Riley Brace picked up his first of the tournament with assists from Shug and Sezikis to draw the majors to within one. Riley Brace from Woodlawn, Ontario. Scored four goals during the Ontario Hockey League playoffs. And I really liked his game since the onset in this one. So has Dave Cameron. has really stepped up and used him a lot more than what we saw in the regular season and even in the playoffs. Wide pulls over Ryan Deason. Jelena, he'll shoot it. Steered away by Anderson. Yurko. Still gets right back up. Yurko with the puck at the corner. To Gabrielle Bourre, Bourre wise with a good shot block. Yurko tipped in front by Kirkpatrick. 
in his final major junior game. The 21-year-old Michael Kirkpatrick has the puck down right wing. He'll blast it, or at least attempt to. Snap just sticking too. That's why he didn't get anything on it. Kareke dangerously in front. And after he's going to take a hugging penalty. Isn't that interesting? A lot of times, you'll look at the officials will officiate the game situationally. And in this case, Corrente does one of the most dangerous things you can do as a defenseman and bring it out in front of your own net. And Anthony, who's not skating at 100%, tries to pickpocket Corrente. And indeed, the stick does come up on one occasion, but more on an attempted stick lift and miss as opposed to a hook. In either case, Anthony goes off. And in the spotlight again, that major's power play. Fifth of the game, they're all for four. Smith Kelly stripped by Dupre. Right through the legs, but held in Kent. And Dupre blocked that to help the Sea Dogs clear the zone. That was the same line against the same player, Kent, in which Dupre took advantage of the turnover in that first period and scored shorthand. Stuart Percy. And in this area, plays it. Off the stick of Smith Kelly. Percy backhander knocked down by Gagne. And Gagne drilled it to the line. Percy off of Thomas and out of play. Some battling in front of the St. John bench. And Peter, very interesting to me. I watched Jacob Desairs at the intermission. And he was a guest of our broadcast partners, RDS. I have never, ever seen a starting goalie in between periods be an intermission guest. Shocked to see it. And I'm just wondering if he's feeling that confident or if he just felt as if, hey, maybe things are going so well for me, I'm going to go on with RDS. They originally wanted Simone to pray. He couldn't answer the bell. Maybe an injury issue, whatever else. But the Sarah did the interview. Amazing. Tells you everything you need to know about that young man. He spent about 25 minutes this morning talking about himself and his team. How many goalies at the next level would you ever see do that? No, nope, that does not happen very often. A quirky bunch to say the least. But you can tell he's a changed person from last year. And he owned everything in terms of reflecting back on Brandon. Fleming on the power play in front, Kipson can't handle it cleanly. Garaggio fails to as well, and the puck makes its way to neutralize. 30 to go on the power play, Kipson, Fleming to the front of the net, block shot by Dave Prey, who has been all world in this game. Yeah, he's been a horse. Huberto and Thomas both nearly stealing the puck. Jordan Mayer is shooting, and he'll go to the bench. Lee loses it. Casey Sizikas to the line. Canton. Good stick by Jonathan Huberto. Well, speaking of Jacob Desairs, last year we went into the MasterCard Memorial Cup, thought he was going to get the start in game one, and that wasn't the case, but he ended up taking over top spot, and very early on, the Windsor Spitfires took advantage of the Wheat Kings and Desairs going on to a 9-1 final. And he remained in goal for all nine of those in one of the most lopsided losses in MasterCard Memorial Cup history. And despite the fact that he gave up nine, I really never came away from that game thinking it was all his fault. No, nope, he played well. He made 40-plus saves that game. Windsor just was a team that was not to be beat after. Just too good. No one was beating them on Championship Sunday night last year. A couple of NHL teams would have struggled to beat them. And they were right. Cramarosa trying to dance to the middle. He'll shoot it wide. And an important penalty kill again for St. John. And they were just 70% of the tournament coming in. Huberto Gallia jumped away from Phillips. Supporting his Jelena. He spun to the ice by Dylan DeMello. Embrace the Mississauga goalie or goal getter. Cramarosa and Yerko bumped in the zone. That's some of the physical play we talked about. Thomas Yurko, we didn't see a lot of doing that sort of thing last year. Yurko with four goals in the tournament. Here he comes. The Slovakian trying to get to the middle. Yurko with it again. Wants Gallia. Gallia off the skate of D'Souza. And shot. Chipped it. And Percy takes over. Jug out there with D'Souza and Flick now. Dave Cameron looking for an answer and an equalizer. 
He prayed bumps with the Souza and just basically said, you can beat it. Great angle by the prey. Phillips into the zone. Your call. Anderson took a peek. But he's got it. 13.49 to go. It remains 2-1 St. John. BEI guys, Gerard Galan and Dave Cameron looking to bring the cup back to respective towns in Prince Edward Island. And these two teams met to open up the tournament back last Friday night. St. John winning that one 4-3. But the same sort of thing has happened previously. That 2005 Ramuski London game in the round robin was one of the best games I have ever seen. And then you look at Windsor and Brandon last year. Windsor won both of those. It'll be interesting to see what kind of history will be written here tonight. 2-0 after one. Grace with the lone Mississauga goal in the second period. And Sam, I think you'd agree as we take a look at one of the better players in the event, Devontae smith Kelly, that the four-team event has been as close as any I know I've been involved in. Oh, yeah, and we thought that, you know, going back to the preview show and, you know, everyone thought Saskatoon and Portland would come out of the West. Sure enough, it was Kootenai who ran, steamrolled through the playoffs there. And a lot of people like St. John, Mississauga, we knew was going to be the host, and the Owen Sound attack. Just a, an awesome finish to a season wrapping up the Ontario Hockey League Championship. Not a lot to separate these clubs. Flick up the middle. The prey in front of his own net to the line, not out. Thomas will move it. Flick with Grace and Devontae Smith. Kelly, that's a different combination. Flick at the line. He's got a great shot. Flick hit a body in front. Went off Durapo again. Huge hit by Danik Goche on Mark Cannon. And in the flashback, we saw Canton score for Windsor in that championship affair. And remember, he played for the Belleville Bulls in the 2008 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Dahlia, weak backhander. DeMello, patient, good play. To Canton, here he comes into the attacking zone, and Rister well wide, hits it. Knocked away by Boyu. Here's Galiev with Gagne jumping up on the rush. Galiev and Percy. Never panic for a second. Does he ever? Cool as ice. I might get a chance to play for his country next year. He'll get invited. Galiev upended by Canton. That was close to being an infraction. Desairs leads it for Boyu. Mayor. To Jamie Wise. Fleming has time. Shoots it off for you, and the puck squirts into the corner. Hits in the steals. Hits in Yurko in the passing lane. Hits him down on the ice, trying to keep it alive. And Yurko will ice the puck. Real tough play there. Max Gitson showing frustration with Nathan Bolyu. And Kitson has had a little trouble handling the puck here in this third period. Had some really good shifts, I thought, in the second period while on the power play. But having issues handling. And here, as he goes down to the ice, the puck's turned over. He and Bolu and Bolu with a cross check while Kitson is down, and that's what he took exception to. Kitson has a goal in this event. Scored in the 2 1 win last Sunday night against Kuti. Anthony. In the skates of Huberto with Phillips. Michael Durazio stopped up by Anthony. Corinthia behind his back to Smith Pelly. Michael Durazio puts on the brakes. Just past Smith Pelly. Gets to it first on the end boards. Smith Pelly to Sizikas with Shug in front. Two World Junior teammates going at one another. And they pray in Sezikis. One guy's leaving here with the prize. Would definitely go a long way in erasing that bitter memory from J January 5th. Judd High, rising Rister, nowhere near the net. And it, I thought that went into the bench of St. John. Maybe it just hit the stanchion. The dashboard hit the stanchion. McCauley into the zone. Gabriel Bure! Anderson hangs on. 
Well, J.P. Anderson finished second in the Ontario Hockey League's Goaltender of the Year award to Mark Byzantine. And his game has really stepped up. Great numbers coming into this one. And tested here. And Bure looking to go low blocker side. But a great job by Anderson. Used that little curl in the pad to kick that puck right back to where he could cover it up. Undrafted, but signed after a prospects tournament in September by the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, got called up for an emergency backup spot in the 22nd of January. This is the shoot-in. Stewart Percy now. Behind the net for Grace. The Major's goal again. Thomas off the ski. And Moray ices it again. No, no problem uh, with the icing. Consecutive tries for the St. John Sea Dogs. How close has this thing been? Well, we look at overtime games, one goal games, and a couple of 3 1 Mississauga wins were sealed by empty netters. So, really, essentially one goal games there as well. Even the 5 0 game, Owen Sound Kootenai was 2 0 with 10 minutes left in the third. And then it got into a little bit of garbage time there. Fleming trying to use the end boards. Kramarosa doesn't lose his balance. Joseph Kramarosa and Kevin Gagne. Hits him as Kramarosa regains control of his stick. Percy pitching to Kramarosa. Kramarosa trying to get free centered in front. Percy, Galliev in the shooting lane. Now to shoot it on target to Sayers. Forced to make the save. And the officials yelling, no way, no way. Pressure on. Kitson will get to it behind the net. Has Mir in front. Kitson still carrying it. Protects it well. Trying to get to the front. And he is stripped by Kirkpatrick. Oh, Percy, good play to kick it. Soccer skills. Tamir, they play that a lot before games. Fleming, a little toe drag on Dave Bray. Brett Fleming to the line. Parente, one time! Hasn't scored since February the 27th. Would have been quite a time for that one. Always dangerous. Parente, the trailer. Sezikis. Held by Dacer. 9.07 to go in regulation. Long way to go. Thank you so much, Mr. Reed. Fans, don't forget to log on to MasterCardMemorialCup.com for stats and tournament updates, as well as Toyo Tires. Pre- and post-game interview clips. Just post-game clips to come from this 2011 edition of the MasterCard Memorial Cup, and it has been a gem of an event. Volunteers here is just spectacular. One of the highlights for me. The job they've done in the committee here in Mississauga. 700 of them. Dave Prey almost lost it right in front to Smith Pelton. Beauregard two on one with McCauley now. Beauregard to the middle, wrist shot, and it was blocked by Parente, who continues to give Dave Cameron some great minutes. He's feeling it a little bit. Nearly found the net on his last shift. Down low, Smith Pelton wrapped around, went right through the crease. Another St. John icing in Mississauga. Really starting to feel it. Smith Pelly, who's been snake bitten in this game, takes advantage of a great job by David Corrente. Corrente enters the zone, and then it'll be Smith Pelly who takes it on the opposite side of the net, comes around for the wrap round, and it goes right through the crease, right by the pads. And Desairs is lucky because when that left pad comes out, if it goes off that left pad, pretty good chance it's going to angle into the net. See the reaction? It was like. Really? I didn't do better with that? That close again. Percy tipped the roller. Off shot right to Dave Sayre. What a great play by Percy. So subtle. He dips his head to make he think that he's going to come and check him. And instead he just hangs back and to sink turns the puck right over. Look, a little head fake there. And now the puck will come right back to him. And any shot can be a dangerous shot. We saw Corrente do it two shifts ago. Percy do it there. 28-21 of the shots in favor of Mississauga. But they trail in the championship affair by a goal. D'Souza protects it against Gagne. Watch Fleck. Fleck using his strength and size against Phillip. Phillip stays on the right side of the puck. Shug and Bolu now. 
shot to Rister, blocked by Gagne. And Phillips. To Huberto. Stephen Anthony with Phillips and Huberto. And off the stick of Percy into the match. Jonathan Huberto continues to impress National Hockey League scouts. He does so many things well here. Watch in the defensive zone. Little stick lift right there from Flick. It's those subtle things that scouts keep an eye on. And when you're paying attention to detail on your own end of the ice, how often does that leave a chance going back the other way? A one goal game when they met on opening night. And we're in the midst of another one. With all the marbles on the line. Yurko. Galliad and Kirkpatrick on the cycle. Kirkpatrick away from Jordan Mayer this time. Canton reverses wide, trying to tip it by Gore. And makes a good chip out of the zone as wide. Kitson and Mayer now. Max Kitson, a wrister. But well wide, and Galliad, watch this guy's one on one skill, but DeMello beat him to it. He's after it again. Backhander knocked down with a high stick. I don't think it would have counted. It would have gone upstairs, though. Kicks it into the zone. Fans off the stick of Dave Prang. Jamie Wise and Jelena. Kitson takes over again. Kitson leaves it for Corrente. Corrente has Wise in front and Kitson. And it was blocked off the stick of Wise. He's skating it out his Dave Prang. Galliaz, that was close to being outside. McCauley a chance. Dave Prey a wrister. Anderson keeping his team in it. Some great action here in the third. Now it's Brace. Shoots it in. Both teams making changes. Under six and a half to go in regulation. It's been ten years since a championship game went to overtime. Durapo shoots it in. Sizikas intercepted by Goche. Danik Goche. The Anthony on the stick belongs to Percy again. Feels like Percy hasn't come off the ice in the third. 5.56 to go. Still 2-1 St. John. Play of the game is brought to you by Bauer Hockey. Well, look at Jacob DeSeres as Rob Flick cuts the corner. He gets a good shot on goal, but the better chance comes to D'Souza. Have a look at this. D'Souza on the doorstep, but DeSeres sticks out that right pad. For our play of the game, Jacob DeSeres. 21-year-old. Hometown is Calgary, but he spent the first 10 years of his life here in the Toronto area. And there's one of the most beautiful things in all of sport. The MasterCard Memorial Cup. Will it be presented for the first time to a team from the Maritimes? St. John less than six minutes away from hoisting it. Percy pulling puck to Susie just failed to get a stick on it. Bullion. Thomas takes a rough ride from Fleck. Percy keeps it in. Fakes the shot. Percy, a man open. Shot went upstairs, but shot it over top of the net. Shot again. Dipsy Doodles. Fleming. Tip by Flick just wide. Great pressure. Flick on target. They say it was a good save. Majors buzzing. Bully wants to clear the zone. Unable to. Shot in front, fabulous stop off D'Souza by Jacob DeSeres. And what will D'Souza be saying? That's three grade A opportunities and he's stopped again by the right pad of Jacob DeSeres. Can you believe the action here? What a stop by DeSeres. That right pad again. Three really good chances for the majors and they can't beat DeSeres. Percy keeps it in at the line, does a great job in the fake. This pass to Shug tries to use those soft hands, but can't lift it up over the glove of Viserys. And then as play would continue, a good move to cut across traffic. And yet another good chance. And D'Souza that close. DeMello gloves it down, pushes it forward. Grace 
Bryce into the corner and Casey Sezik is the captain. Durapo knocked him down and Galliev moves to center. Galliev to Yerko with Kirkpatrick. Missed Galliev the trail. And Galliev is exhausted. He'll go to the bench. End of the match, and a faceoff will come to the center ice area. Stan Galliev, we watched his game grow here over the last couple of years. He too adding a very physical element and the ability to compete, unlike last year. And it's so tough for European players when they come over to get adjusted. I mean, think about being away from your family, going to a billet, new language, new way to play hockey, new team, new friends. It can be tough, but Galliev is just as well here in year two. He's got some swagger. On and off the ice. Yeah, he's a, a fun guy to be with. He is. Great personality. Mayor! Wrist shot! Blocked. Gets it upended. Held in by Durazio. Majors doing everything in the last few minutes, but tie the game. Phillips with Huberto, a two on one for these great players. Phillips, Huberto, he scores! Jonathan Huberto! 43 to go. Well, Doug McClain talked about it. when you need your biggest goal, you look to your best player, and Jonathan Huberto does a great job. Corrente shows hesitation. Look at the hesitation right here by Corrente. As soon as he decides to go in, that's it. The puck's gone past him. You know with these magic hands that the puck is at one point going to get to Huberto. Phillips fake shot, looks off the defender. Huberto to the backhand. And it is a 4-2 St. John lead. Thanks to the player whose legend continues to grow. Great players do great things in big games. What more can you want from the 17-year-old from St. Jerome, Quebec? Great play by Phillips to look off the shot. Now once the defender commits, he knows he's got Huberto wide open. And I'm quite certain that once he got it to Huberto, he knew it was going to the back of the net. Third of the tournament for Jonathan Huberto from Phillips and McCauley. And Sam has followed all the pressure at the other end. How many times do you see it? Five good chances. Percy stick handling takes his shoulder from Gochi. Shug flip. I just send it right back to Shug and Beauregard with excellent draw weight. As Anderson relays it for D'Souza off the line. But here's Gallia with some room. Gallia Brister and send it wide. Now becomes the question how soon do you get your goalie out if you're Dave Camp? Terrific third period here in the title game. De Preyes a stick knocked away from him, and Sezikis scoots toward the net. Shot by Brace off the skate goes wide. Sezikis nearly banks it in on Jacob Desir. Two and a half to go in regulation, a 3-1 lead for the team that won 58 regular season games. to Smith Pelly. DeMello pitching. Brace. Now it's Sezikis again. Tipped in front. Rebound. Sensational again for Jacob Desairs. Backhander. And I don't know if you can give an MVP award to a right leg, but if you can, it's going to be the right leg of Jacob Desairs. And again, He's out, kicked off the skate, then the stick, and then the right pad comes out again. Devontae smith Pelly with two real good cracks at it, and you think he's got wide open net there? No, sir, says Jacob Desairs. Comes across with a right pad save for about the third time in this game on a grade-A opportunity for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. In his second consecutive MasterCard Memorial Cup final, Last year went as awful as it ever could for any goaltender, giving up nine. Tonight's gone nearly as well as it ever could for Jacob Desairs. That's about as good as one goaltender can play. I mean, that right leg has saved three goals. 
let's go back to 2005. Cedric Desjardins was the goaltender for the Ramuski Oceanic, losing to Danny Safret and the London Knights. And you can see the disappointment in his face the following year against the Moncton Wildcats in the final. He was awesome. I mean, just awesome for Patrick Wilde's Quebec Ramparts. And next to Radulov, probably the best player in that game. And on the topic of the Quebec Ramparts, the St. John Sea Dogs 2-0-1 away from being the first team from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup when the Ramparts did it in Moncton in 2006. First ever Maritime team to win. There'll be some kind of fired up at Harbor Station. Still some time to go net empty for Dave Cameron's crew. Fleck feeds it down low, Dave Cray. Thomas and the five year captain chips it up. Smith Kelly. Bullion chips it on the boards for McCauley, who, by the way, with his first assist on that key third goal. Dave Crane avoids a check, passes it to himself, and flips it out of his own. McCauley with an empty net can't get to it. Praise like that. He's just, he's beyond this league. Shot into the zone, backhands it. They stairs, able to cover it. Still a minute two left, so there is time for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, but boy, oh boy, the way Jacob Desairs is playing, it almost looks like destiny, and for this guy as well, Jonathan Huberto, he and the captain, Casey Sezekis, exchanging words. Sezekis has been at it all game, trying to get into the head of Desairs and then Huberto, but right now, the young Jonathan Huberto has the upper hand. And Huberto with that winner, 17-35 into overtime versus Owen Sound in their second game of the tournament to go 2-0 and, oh and propel them directly into the championship game. And look what he's done with another timeout. This one with 102 remaining to the team with a two goal lead. Well, JP Anderson was so good as well. And Mississauga, it comes down to two things for me. The inability to bury some chances five on five, but let's go back to the power play for Mississauga. Just could not make any, play, any hay on the power play. And that was pretty much the story for Dave Cameron's team throughout the entire tournament. 0 for 5 on this night with a man advantage. But as you mentioned, still a, you know, a minute two left here. And St. John wanting to keep its best defensive players with as much rest as possible. Makes its final reparations. And of course you would see Dipre and Durapo, McCauley so valuable at both ends of the ice. But you get the feeling coming back from that huddle that St. John is really feeling it right now. And why wouldn't they with a buck two left? Jonathan Huberto's third of the tournament at 16-17 of this third period on a beautifully executed two-on-one from Phillips. The reason for the two-goal margin into the final minute of regulation. Block shot by McCauley. Jelena off the glass, blocked down. Fleming. Hill shooting and Dave Sears does it again. Another good stop by Desairs, and more importantly, he's able to corral the rebound. Jonathan Huberto, who did not do a whole lot in that game against Owen Sound, but when his team needed him most, he stepped up and got the job done. And he's able to take advantage of this Kirkpatrick pass, and what a finish. Canton just missed with a hard wrist shot. Flick, tipped by Sezekis. Huberto races to a loose puck against Fleming. Kirkpatrick, the same play, the net empty for Dupre. Missed it. Huberto, he'll just protect it. I bet they're going crazy at Harbor Station in St. John. Oh, yeah. Durapo. Dillon a chance to clear it, and he does. And that's going to do it for the first time ever. A team from the Maritimes have won the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Their mission is accomplished. And isn't that something neat to see? 
after the bitter disappointment of one year ago and a 9-1 loss to the Windsor Spitfires, Jacob Desair is in the middle of that mob as the young and gun St. John Sea Dogs capture the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup. And the heartbreak for Casey Sezikis, who lost that final of the World Junior. An overtime loss in the OHL final to Owen Sound in Game 7, and now this. As the celebration will last for quite some time, Max Kitson, Chris D'Souza. These are scenes you see at the end of this game every year, and they don't get any easier to watch, my friend. And for that gentleman there as well, so much pressure put on him to win this game. And you go to the jubilation. Rob Falls has the winning coach. Rob? It has been quite a season for the St. John Sea Dogs with this young team. Well, they were everything. They did everything for you. Yeah, I'm very proud of them, obviously. I mean, it's a tough game today, and you look over the other side, and it's tough to lose. You know what I mean? So I feel for that team. They worked hard, and they competed real hard, and uh, it was a great season for the Sea Dogs. No and doubt. you really had to hold them off in the latter stages of that game. They came strong. Jacob DeSerre was the difference, there's no doubt. He played outstanding, and, you know, it's redemption for him after last year's blowout loss. Jordan, congratulations. Thanks very much. St. John's Sea Dogs are the winners of the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup, and this is the hardest way to say goodbye. Handshakes in your own building. The two-time CHL Coach of the Year has added a MasterCard Memorial Cup title. And Sam, when we left the rink this morning, the one thing I said to you after Jacob Desairs spent 20 minutes with us was, I don't care who wins this game, but after what I watched that young man go through in the final last year and how he's owned it and how great he's been, I just really deep down wanted him to play a good game and he played better than good and admittedly came in with a completely different mindset than a year ago he knew he was the number one guy he Gerard Gallant allowed him to bow to the last game of the round robin in order to get rested up and get prepared for this one and Desairs was fantastic full value the MasterCard Memorial Cup champions the St. John Sea Dogs First time since 2006 that a Quebec League team has won the title and a maritime based team has never won before now. As we bring back our Hockey Central panel, guys. Peter Darmillard, Nick Kiprios, Doug McLean, and Damian Cox upstairs third level here at the Hershey Center for the second time in less than a month. St. Mike's watches the opposition celebrate and presented with a trophy on their ice and there's a wide ranging thought process that Jacob Desairs was carried by St. John all year that he was just there not to blow it much different tonight Damien well I'm, I mean what a story an individual story within a great team story this is a young man 21 years old loses 9 1 in last year's Memorial Cup final then he's on waivers early this year has to relocate from Brandon to St. John and then comes in and plays I mean what a game he played he had Chris D'Souza in the first uh, save off him, Devon, uh, Devonte Smith, Pelly late. What a game by him! General Manager Kelly McCrimmon from the Brandon Wheat Kings just sent a text saying, "Jake's an excellent person, very focused, big on preparation. Really, really happy for him." Yeah. Here's Rob Fultz. With Dave Cameron of the Mississauga St. Mike's Majors, you wanted your team to work. They worked as hard as you could get them to work, but still couldn't solve Jacob Desairs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, St. John's a great team. And you you gotta you gotta work hard, you gotta execute, you gotta get a few breaks. And uh, we didn't leave anything in the tank. And as disappointing as it is, um, when you don't leave anything in the tank, it makes the healing process a little slower. It doesn't take quite as long. As you say to your players all the time, if you know you left it all there, it as you said, you can look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, you know, and uh, like I say, when you, when you lose when you lose the bulk of your feelings, and it's for the kids because they they've committed to me, they've been with me three and four years. They've done anything I have asked. I'll get over this, but the, the lingering effect will be because how much I care for those guys. David, it's been a pleasure watching you guys work all this year. Appreciate it very much. Dave Cameron of the Mississauga St. Mike's Majors.
Maybe the lasting effect is the fan support that the St. Mike's Majors managed to garner through this playoff run to MasterCard Memorial Cup. Plenty more from the Hershey Center as the Maritimes celebrate their first Memorial Cup title. Ken and Ivanka here at Connected. The party's on in towns like Sussex, New Brunswick, North New Brunswick. It's definitely on in St. John, New Brunswick tonight. Yeah, and also at the Hershey Center. So we're going to send things back and don't want to miss any of the celebrations for the Sea Dogs as they are hoisting their cup back to the Hershey Center. Appreciate it. On the third level of the Hershey Center, Darren Millard, Nick Kiprios, and Doug McLean with Damian Cox watching the St. John Sea Dogs celebrate the first Memorial Cup championship for the Maritimes. There's only one thing left to do, an MVP trophy and the presentation by David Branch. Rob Fultz. Mississauga, what a job you have done in the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Speaking on behalf of MasterCard, is Lily Tomovich. She's the head of marketing for MasterCard Canada. Thank you. On behalf of MasterCard, we are so incredibly proud to sponsor North America's toughest championship to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup. This event could not happen without the help of so many, so a quick thank you, a thank you to a few. First of all, a thank you to David Branch and on the Canadian Hockey League for the relentless commitment to junior sports in Canada. A big thank you to the host city of Mississauga, Mayor Hazel, the incredible fans we've had here all week, and of course the hundreds and hundreds of volunteers. And last but not least, I'd like to congratulate the winners of the 2012 MasterCard Memorial Cup, the St. John Sea Dogs. Look forward to seeing you in Schwinnigan next year. All right, Lily, we're going to get you to hand out the Stafford Smythe Trophy. This is for the tournament MVP, the most valuable player of the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup is wearing Sea Dog Blue. Numero owns number 11, Jonathan Huberdo. That's one trophy. There was one trophy remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, coming from the Zamboni entrance here at the Hershey Center, led by the Pipers, will be the president of the Canadian Hockey League, commissioner of the Ontario Hockey League, and the MasterCard Memorial Cup. There's a party in Mississauga that's been going on for 10 days. We know there's one at Harbor Station in St. John, and this is what they've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Canadian Hockey League to make a very special presentation, David Branch. Thank you very much, Rob. This is...
the 93rd MasterCard Memorial Cup. And as we all recognize, it was first presented in 1919 to remember those Canadian men and women who paid the supreme sacrifice in the great First World War. It has been rededicated to keep in mind and in memory and pay tribute to all military who have given the supreme sacrifice regardless of conflict. The military is without question the ultimate team. Let me suggest that one of the special features that made this event arguably the best ever was the four great teams, the Kootenai Ice, Owen Sound Attack, Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, and the St. John Sea Dogs. On behalf of the Canadian Hockey League, I would firstly like to thank Mr. Eugene Melnick. It was his vision, his energy, that brought the Memorial Cup to Mississauga. As well to Mayor Hazel McCallion, the City of Mississauga, the over 700 volunteers. The efforts of so many the support of the National Hockey League, our broadcast partner, Rogers Sportsnet, we cannot express enough sincere appreciation. At this time, on behalf of Commissioner Ron Robinson of the Western Hockey League, I'd like to express congratulations to Commissioner Gilles Corto of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. It's with great pride when your team wins the MasterCard Memorial Cup. To the owner of the St. John Sea Dogs, Mr. Scott McCain. S Hold on, Scott. <laughs> I know, Scott, this has been a challenging time preceding the MasterCard Memorial Cup, a terrible family loss of your father. In a small way, hopefully this will bring energy and a sense of pride to your family as your dad looks down on this very, very special evening. I'm sure, Scott, it's with great pride that the St. John Sea Dogs represent the very first center to capture the MasterCard Memorial Cup for Atlantic Canada. To Gerard Gallant, head coach, to his associate coach, Mike Kelly, the rest of the staff, and in particular, the players and families, congratulations. Mike Thomas, come on up here, big guy. watching what is a true team celebration from the St. John Sea Dogs in the sense that Gerard Gallant took four players out of his lineup for the final round robin game and made sure almost everybody got a chance to experience this national championship and the MasterCard Memorial Cup tournament. Back to Rob. 
They could hardly wait to get their hands on the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Mike Thomas, the captain of the St. John Sea Dogs. What does this mean to your squad? This means everything. I mean, uh, bringing the cup to Atlanta Cam for the first time, and uh, we got a bunch of great guys and great organization, and uh, together we just pulled through the hard times and the good times, and here we are. You were in quite a battle tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, it took it to us a little bit, but uh, good teams find a way to win, and we were able to do that tonight. Now you have to shave off that uh, that beard, but I think you're going to be smiling through it all. Yeah, I have no problem shaving this off after a night like tonight. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The captain of the St. John Sea Dogs. Jonathan, Jonathan Huberto holding up the Memorial Cup trophy and takes home the MVP, Doug. Yeah, look, the kid um, had a terrific tournament. We said if there's a game breaker, he's the guy. I thought St. John were really hanging on second part of the second period, third period. But he's such a game breaker. He's done it time and time again. Think back to the Quebec League finals. They were trailing 23 seconds left in game seven or game six, I should say. He scored the tying goal, you know, with the goaltender pulled to force it to overtime. He's been a big playmaker, big play player all year long. This kid's got a chance to be a great NHLer. The panel did not have a vote on the MVP balloting, but it was unanimous up here between the four of us that it should have gone to Jacob Desairs, who is with Rob Fultz. What a difference a year makes. This is two straight MasterCard Memorial Cup finals you've been in. This one, you get to raise the cup. Yeah, it's, it's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, I, last year it was the worst feeling in the world, and uh, I just knew I, I didn't want to feel like that again. You said that you learned so much the past year. You left home to do it, and you really established yourself as a frontline man. Yeah, you know, I've grown so much. I, uh, you know, I worked a lot of my game in the summer, but uh, mentally I just... I just grew so much. I, I don't know exactly what it was in particular that made it happen. I, I know I've got I've got a lot of support back home with all my family and friends, and uh, you know, and my it just they were they always there for me and believed in me. And uh, you know, I don't know this year. I just finished uh, that one wall in my house. You know, I put the final brick, and something happened. And uh, you know, I just understood and found myself uh, saw myself more than I've ever have. And you had a great team to play. As the backstop too. Oh, absolutely! You can't undermine that at all. My team was unbelievable, and uh, you know they just on and off the ice. The you know the character in this room was just incredible, and I, I'm so thankful and grateful to be a part of it. You know what they need you for? They need you for a very special photograph. Now, congratulations, Thank you very much, Jacob Desairs. He is ready to go. It has become a tradition in the Mastercard Memorial Cup. This might be more treasured than anything else they will get here in Mississauga, guys. Rob, one of the greatest individual stories in the Canadian Hockey League's history. Yeah, and nothing to take away from uh, Jonathan uh, Hubino, who was terrific, but my MVP was this guy right here. Um, we talked about the game breakers before the game, and, and, and that's stated, but they don't win this Memorial Cup tonight without that type of goaltending from Jacob uh, Desaris. He was phenomenal. Some of those saves that he made were uh, difference makers. He's listed at 6-2, and he needed every inch on a couple of right-legged pad saves tonight that solidified the championship. Well, a couple of brilliant ones in the last five minutes. One on Rob Flick on a nice setup from Justin Chug uh, with five minutes left. And then what a save on uh, Devontae smith Pelly with just a couple of minutes left. Because they get that one, maybe they pull the goalie. Well, they did, but they get a chance. So I, I like Huberto, but uh, De Desera is insult because his story is so good. Maybe you like to see him win that. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And and what a you know Kelly McCrimmon, the GM of the Brandon Wheat Kings, who really worked to place this kid through Mike Kelly. You know, got him to you know obviously you get a guy through waivers. They worked to get make that happen to give this kid a second chance. So there's lots of people to be thankful. But did he ever stand tall throughout this entire tournament? He was that good, and tonight especially good. Doug, you're a Maritimer. The significance of this victory for St. John. Well, really, it's terrific for the Maritimes because the Quebec League has really evolved in the Maritimes. And, I, and when I'm home in the summer, I hear kids talking about they want to play in the queue. They want to play in the queue. It's become great for the Maritime kids. It's great for Maritime hockey fans. And you know what? They're the strength of the Quebec League. But, but, the Maritime franchise are the strength of the but league. But isn't this, like, it speaks to the psyche of Atlanta, Canada, where it's always been thought you've got to go away exactly. to make it big. But now you don't have to go away. You can play for one of the six uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League teams, Halifax, Cape Breton, 
you know, right through there, uh, KD Bathurst and, of course, uh, these guys. And that makes a big difference to, I think, that you can speak to, Doug. You had to go away and play in Montreal. Yeah. They don't have to go that well, far no, anymore. And, and Desiris, you know, we, we know players get traded in, in, in the CHL. That's, that's a known fact. But you hardly ever see a guy change leagues. And that's what DeSaris, on waivers. And that's what DeSaris <laughs> needed to do. He needed yeah. to leave the Western Hockey League and then go to the Quebec League. And 12 months later, boy, does he feel good. The MasterCard Memorial Cup was what tipped things in Taylor Hall's favor last year and led the Edmonton Oilers to take him first overall. I wonder if we're watching the same thing happen with Jonathan Hubido, who's standing by with Rob. He is the MVP of the MasterCard Memorial Cup and also a Memorial Cup champion. How good does that sound? Uh, it's a great feeling. I can't describe it right now. It's unbelievable. We, we work on that since the beginning of the season. We won the cup, and then uh, we got that, so we're very, very happy for it. Everything seemed to be pointed in this direction. You had a fabulous regular season. You did very well in the playoffs. You came in here as the favorite team, and you certainly had to work for it. There was a tough final game. Yeah, it was uh, pretty hard. We had some down in the, in the game the last uh, in the third period, and uh, they came, they came, <clears throat> they came very hard on us. And I think uh, we found a way to win. That's that's what we need. Tell me about your development this season. Do you feel much more confident as a hockey player? Do you feel better about your, the way you're playing? Yeah, for sure. You you always try to get some confidence uh, every day or you're on the ice, and I think that's what I'm trying to do. And I try to work hard every time I'm on the ice too. So uh, so I'm doing, and we'll see uh, for the future. Yeah, and for the future, you might have a very busy summer ahead of you, too. Yeah, I'll have a busy summer, but that's that's hockey, and I have fun when I play hockey, so I'll do that, and I'll, I'll have fun, too. Enjoy this celebration. Okay, thank you very much. Jonathan Huberto of the St. John Sea Dogs. This is a team that was built on offense, had all those game breakers, but in the championship final, they killed off all five St. Mike power play opportunities. They were a lunch pail group when it mattered most and put everything else to the side. Dave Cameron, another tough loss for both himself and Casey Zizekas. The World Junior Final, the OHL Championship Series, they held a 3-2 series lead and ended up falling in overtime in this very building against Owen Sound. And now tonight, couldn't get any closer than 2-1. Couldn't claw back and erase that two-goal deficit that they so needly needed a goal from the likes of Max Kitson. You feel great for what the QMJHL is accomplishing. Putting the M in QMJHL, supplanting major for maritime. Gerard Glantz stayed, Jacob Desairs landed, and Jonathan Huberto has officially arrived. Congratulations to the St. John Sea Dogs as we bring in Rob Faltz. No matter where the MasterCard Memorial Cup is held, big city or small town, the hockey fan makes it a celebration. Even if their team isn't front and center, watching the battle for the top prize is sweet. Each team comes equipped with a slogan, a theme that captures their desire to win. And no matter how you translate it, these athletes have bought in. Time is taken to honor and to remember those that made this game their life. These are the best on ice in the Canadian Hockey League. Coast to coast. And the pain, the frustration, the joy, the price that must be paid can be seen on the face of every young man. You will leave the MasterCard Memorial Cup with memories of stars from past eras being saluted. Staying true to your roots, even though you now play a long way from home. Getting an earful from the coach, but also getting his praise for a job well done. Showing the world that sometimes you surrender your good looks for results. And saying goodbye when the run for the cup comes to an early end. But one thing is certain, you will always remember one scene. Because this is the moment each hockey player lives for.